Hi, um, I'm a painter and an artist. I was approached because of my body of work <clears throat> to participate in a film that had some uh, people, I believe, that were acting in bad faith, uh, plagiarizing some of my work. Um, it was a documentary crew, claiming to be a documentary crew, uh, claiming to want to have me in their film uh, under the ethos of a documentary film. Um, I sent them a deal memo with conditions they turned down my conditions. These were to protect my brand and my likeness and because I didn't know these people. Anyways, uh, the film is, is now on Amazon Prime. The film is now on Netflix. Um, I'm having to deal with emails and all sorts of people. Um, bottom line is they've reproduced uh, paintings that I had in my studio. Um, they're on Netflix right now and I declined participation and any use of my work, and they're using, they're, they're, they basically have my paintings. Um, okay, well, we, we, don't, we don't handle anything like that. This is a criminal law firm, when that means we represent people charged with felonies and misdemeanors. Oh, okay, so it says copyright law. You're just using that to bring people to you? Because, I, I mean, it, it doesn't serve you to say you serve on, on the Internet with your algorithms on your website, you know, to say that you do copyright law and it brings me to you and you guys don't do it because you're not going to get me. <laughs> it's like you're doing a different law, so I don't know why your algorithms are saying you do copyright law. You should fix that. Thank you. Hello. Please state your name after the tone, and Google Voice will try to connect you. Math Powerland, uh, copyright <clears throat> Uh, hi, I'll, leave, I'll be brief. My name is Math Powerland. Um, some documentary crew was harassing me to be a part of a documentary based on people being affected by my body of work online. I sent conditions. They declined. They now have a painting that I created um, and other things on Netflix, and they're charging four ninety nine a pop. Not only Netflix, but Amazon Prime, the world's richest man. And I've had a couple run-ins with fraud uh, and Amazon and Jeff Bezos with my work. Uh, it's a real situation. I have the email correspondence of them pleading to be in this documentary, me turning them down, sending out a deal memo, then rejecting my conditions because I suspected they were up to foul play and smearing for exploiting my likeness and my artwork for profit. And they're doing it. Um, and I have nobody helping me. And I'm willing to just, boom, give the majority of the settlement. Um, but I need a real lawyer here because this is clear cut. They're reproducing a painting. Uh, from my body of work as an artist on Netflix and charging people and I do not <laughs> this is not a proper society 786-355-0818 uh, I don't know if this is turning into China but I'm, I'm having a heck of a time trying to find a real uh, lawyer who knows copyright who, who claims they're a copyright lawyer please call me back I'm in Vegas <clears throat> <clears throat> so, on that note, this is the painting. Um, I've been <clears throat> basically uh, harassed by this production company to uh, called uh, Delta Five very military sounding uh, production company. Uh, I've been harassed by them for, well, quite a little over a year. Um, I don't know who they are, uh, but they were insistent on uh, claiming they really wanted a sincere um, version or me to talk about my work. So I sent, sent out conditions, I don't know them, to make sure that it wasn't some sort of hit piece on me that was gonna take my artwork 
my, my comedy monologue, my expedition documentary across Antarctica that I'm, I'm basically, I branded myself to push, to push the globe over the edge um, by having a huge open, for the first time ever, mass civilian crossing and measurement of Antarctica. Because nobody's ever done a north-south complete crossing with witnesses. Um, it's always to the South Pole and then turn right, not going across the massive continent. They say crossing, they insist on crossing on all these publicity stunts with one person or two people or no witnesses um, who they select can go um, on, on the path they choose, uh, you know, the treaty members or whatever slice nation that has a piece of the Treaty of Antarctica, and, um, and not an actual open civilian audit with, uh, with video cameras 24-7 filming a race. So that's my expedition. So it's just to prove the globe, but with mass amounts of people to witness it is a globe by a north-south uh, trek by foot and by boat, um, north-south across Antarctica to prove that the Earth does round up to be a globe from like South America to South Africa or Australia. Um, a lot of pushback on this and a lot of people using what I've said and then copying and mirroring me and my talking points from a comedy routine that provoked this and then this documentary crew insisting be a part of this. Um, for all intents and purposes, this is going to be a fair use, clear fair use, because it's all fair, uh, especially when somebody's approached me to be, approached me to be in their film um, under sort of suspicious um, circumstances, like with their behavior and their correspondence. Didn't seem sincere, especially when you look at the final product. So I'm executing fair use <clears throat> to defend my brand, my name, my work, and... Um, Expose that they've copyright violated by reproducing the uh, artwork um, without my consent and me in front of it um, that was recorded from a camera that I purchased in a studio uh, that I was renting. And so you could see, you know, the fees that went into this footage plus the four months that it took to make this painting. To have a complete uh, estranged so called alleged documentary crew. Uh, use my artwork and my likeness uh, without indicating the comments platform of YouTube in the shot, but just full frame footage I filmed from a camera I purchased in a studio I rented of a painting I painted with my face in front after we had correspondence where I said no um, is, a, is a clear violation of copyright, especially when they're taking it out of context, exploiting the artwork, uh, with me in front of it uh, with an agenda to smear and paint me in a false light um, for profit on Netflix and Amazon Prime. So in, uh, without fitter, further ado, I'm going to um, do the disclaimer right here. Uh, fair use. <clears throat> and if Carolyn Clark and Delta 5, <laughs> that's their production company, Want to research copyright disclaimer, fair use, um, and YouTube as well because uh, they basically claimed uh, through community guidelines I was violating their copyright of a film that violates my copyright uh, simply by putting the title behind the curve, free screening, and I never screened it. And um, they took down my live stream uh, abilities, which prevents me uh, from feeding myself and thriving and surviving and continue, continuing in the flow of commerce uh, in a free market society protected by copyright, um, UCC, Uniform Code, um, Trade, um, First Amendment, um, and fair use. Um, and I never even aired it. And so if something's going on with YouTube and, and some sort of partnership or convenient sort of uh, relationship where they take the cue from Delta Phi Productions uh, to disband or block me from uploading live content on the topic. So fair use today, we're going to be talking about this YouTube violation of its own community gu guidelines with a false claim that I <laughs> copyright violated a work that I never aired that actually is in copyright violation YouTube and Delta Phi Productions of this painting called Hands created by me, Matt Parlan, LLC, um, care of Matthew Boylan, the legal um, family name. So here we go. 
we're going to uh, uh, do a fair screening of not just that, but um, uh, we're going to do commentary on a property purchased by me, a screen where I'll be watching um, through fair use behind the curve and I'll be stopping it and talking uh, how the timeline narrative of them corresponding me by email and claiming what they claimed they were going to uh, film and how they absolutely needed the originator but did not want to abide by the condition that they show the origin of the flat earth phenomenon which was a comedy monologue I had to decline because if you care about my view and me being the originator I've cleverly triggered the entire world to uh, audit globalism at its literal form it's the image of a globe um, through a comedy monologue that tests perception and so this was not uh, they did not want to have this condition um, overarching the production value or the direction of their documentary and yet claim they wanted to have the originator and uh, they were a documentary crew and wanted to cover how this started so the fact that they didn't abide by that condition or didn't want to agree to that condition proved to me that they were misrepresenting themselves through email with an agenda to fit me into a narrative that would make me look out of, out of context from being an entertainer who made a comedy routine simply that nobody's been able to debug and uh, somehow triggered some Hollywood production company to uh, wake up one morning and say, we're going we're gonna to take this guy out of context um, and, and not abide by his conditions and just paint him in the narrative that we want where we've already chosen another central character that's going to represent his work or his monologue in a different package form but still plagiarism nonetheless to be debated whether it's copyright violation uh, as copyright does not necessarily protect ideas. Um, but there are punchlines, there are words that I said on this channel, there are words I said on the, on, in that routine that is coming now out of the mouth of characters like Mark Sargent, who are an alias owned by another p potential alias, Joseph Real, who uh, bought the name, I believe, he, had in, in, he admits in, uh, on record, I think in 2013 or 12, anyways, back then, before the Flat Earth even um, was even on the character of Mark Sargent's radar, or this guy, Joseph Real, who back then was a vice president at Warner Brothers in charge of new media that would be internet, web, uh, applications, and now runs a company called Metatron, a very big company, and uh, sponsors all sorts of events that were then created specifically as a um, crescendo scene in the movie that is violating my copyright. So it's very intricate, very elaborate, but this is clearly copyright violation. You can't just print up an image painted by an artist and then sell that image for $3.99, $4.99. And the reason why I bring that up is because they admit that the origin of the entire Flat Earth phenomenon, uh, the documentary crew, and through email correspondence and on camera, is me. And the origin is a comedy routine. So to make money off the topic that originated from me, paint me out of context and false light against my consent um, after declining my conditions through email correspondence and then seeing this painting up there plus my likeness plus somebody who I, I said to this documentary crew um, is a plagiarist and I need these conditions to protect my brand if I'm going to participate in this film because the idea would be to have me seed copyright through an interview release to them and their central character would be the individual who's um, owned by this character, Joseph Real and Metatron, called Mark Sargent, and then he uh, would be clear to violate completely all talking points of the routine because I would have been an accomplice and ceded all the rights in a film to my work through interview release of a company I don't know if they are a partner of Metatron, but seem to be in that Metatron sets up the events, Metatron sets up the characters, and then Delta 5 comes in and films it. All they need is me to sign the interview release, which I did not. 
and then I've ceded copyright to every talking point that these people are plagiarizing because I'm in the same film as them. So I wasn't that foolish. I sent out a deal memo, standard deal memo, okay, with an actual professional documentary filmmaker called Diane English of Scenario Productions out of Montreal, Canada, okay, who's done stuff for Bravo um, in Canada. And we're going to look at that right now real quickly. And we're going to look at the correspondence so everybody can understand uh, why is a comedy routine had to be disciplined in this kind of strange manner. And by the way, if anybody knows where Delta 5, Delta V Productions, right, uh, is based, uh, please send that to mathparallel at gmail.com. Even if it's a P.O. box, we can't seem to find anything. So, and just like the Flat Earth, I want to send out a million researchers on this because we want to get to the bottom of uh, at what point this is some sort of... All these people are working together. And why? Why? Is, is a comedy routine that threatening? We're going to strip it right back down to this being a bratty little comedy routine that escaped on French TV and then on the web in English through Just for Last Festival where the CEO has been pulled over by the Me Too movement for being a sexual predator and a rapist, by the way. This, the same CEO that was in charge of the festival, right, that I've accused of, um, of being, having, uh, receiving leniency from the courts up in Canada for raping young women, underage women. Um, he's, he's now had to de, uh, demission himself, demote himself, or resign uh, because of the court battles for being a rapist. Okay, I'm trying to find that deal memo, and it's not showing up here. Hold on a second. I don't know why it's not. Things are disappearing, right? And it's kind of interesting how, um, you know, like I've had a lot of people watching me over the years, how the computer is, uh, it's almost like somebody's coming in and blocking us from, from doing stuff. Um, kind of like Comcast moving your cursor around. So it's not foreign. I mean, you could see your internet provider coming on your own laptop. Um, try to find his DML mode because we did download it. Where is the deal memo? Wow, I've got to actually download it from from the from the web. Okay, so I think in the beginning here is I want to go back in time. So we're going to go back in time through the exhibit of the correspondence with Carolyn Clark, the producer here. Now, my car just blew up. It burst into flames going up the Sierras. It was a serious condition. I always had situations happening, and they were corresponding with me. Um, so this is it. I don't trust these individuals. I don't know them, the ones that are using my work from this comedy monologue. They've turned it into an entire industry, a cult industry, subculture. Um, this is certainly what we'd like to talk to you about. So I'm they're painting this kind of, we want to talk to you about all this. We're sincere. Um, so I'm talking about you know information I'm getting from other people where we've you know disclosed we've uncovered that uh, Mark Sargent is owned by a guy called Joseph Real. Joseph Real then admits it on a, on that show by Patricia Steer if that's her name um, that he owns the label. Mark Sargent is a partner with Metatron. Um, they're talking about their schedule here when they're going to come the 14th and the 15th. Um, they're planning to go to the conference um, I asked for their uh, films they've done so they have a relationship with Netflix so they have like a green light um, I don't know who rents their crap but um, I'm the guy who started the flutter so if I'm in it they could sell quite a bit of downloads right um, more than they are now that's for sure um, especially if they would have just abided by the conditions so I could protect what, what my monologue is all about in this expedition. So there's their interview release, right? Um, already setting it up that I'm going to have other cameras there. 
Um, so now that all the cards are finally on the table and paranoia is no longer an appropriate Bob, I, I then uh, send her my deal memo, which is standard. It was drafted by documentary. Thank you for your deal memo. Unfortunately, we are unable to ac accommodate your requests. Okay? So here's the deal memo. Okay? Artists will collaborate with producers, da, 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 um, which shall comprise creative content as part of the documentary, which shall comprise... See, I'm kind of going, who's this Hollywood crew? They're coming in and they want to talk about something that I triggered. Okay, well, you're kind of like, you're now going to make a profit off something I created. I want to know if you've already chosen a central character and I'm basically going to be second fiddle so that I'm ceding copyright by signing your interview release. So I ask for no less than 25% of on-camera time with my, my character and my work. This is how I'm going to find out if they've already uh, chosen somebody else or if they're going to split me evenly with all these people uh, I've accused of plagiarism. Because then I'm kind of... I, the interview release allows them to edit me any way they want. So this is a way for me to find out uh, the intentions or if there's a hidden agenda that they're lying about. It's portion of the documentary here. They could have said, hey, look, we can't do 25% for this, but we can do this condition because there's several conditions here, right? So, human mind, I, I like, these are talking points I want to talk about. The segment, although maybe, and this is rough. They could like, I, let, I told them, you could change it up, you could fine tune it. I mean, because it's serious. Like, you want to talk to the guy who started this? Well, then let's let's go in. Um, so, the reason the, I want to talk about the perpetrators of the globe conspiracy: Pope, Royals, and the Spiritual Academia, uh, CIA. Expedition to settle it once and for all. A complete double traverse with many teams to police the outcome, and cannot be staged or faked. S uh, shirt, photo, or painting, live painting, completed design, fakes, and online warfare to drown out the expedition and copyright violation. Yeah, I didn't. I never read this. Like the way she wrote it, almost sounds like because she drafted it. I just like was so busy on so many fronts. Started as a comedy team, French and English show, and started against players securing. You know, these are the points. The story of Columbus versus a canoe across the Bering Strait from Russia to Alaska. These are all the points. Authorship of the segment and the capacity of author, both written and verbally by the artist. The artist ret retains sole ownership and credit for his material. This to include his point of view, thesis, and all his spoken. And like I'm doing all this to make sure that if this is a hit piece. At least this is going to be transmitted in the hit piece. You know, these are both sides of the documentary. You could say, oh, well, it's propaganda. It's like, it doesn't matter. You can edit it whatever way you want, but these things are going to be in there somehow. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign your interview release as long as these talking points are mentioned. Now, you can edit it like I'm crazy, but these talking points are going to be in there, Right? Um, another one, the, the math parallel story from painting or photograph to current. That would be the stand-up routine. Um, and an expedition to settle it once for all. Complete double traverse with many teams to police the outcome. Cannot be staged fake. 1.347. And it's every talking point that I'm about. And they want me in their documentary film. So it's like, this is what I'm about. Do you, you want to film me like taking a crap? Um, making a ham sandwich, that's fine. But in order to get that goofy footage, these talking points have to be in your film. Right? So even if you have a film where you're just like, we're going to try to make him look like a goof. It's like, well, the conditions are you have to have these talking points as well. And then it's up to you to edit them to still make me look like a goof and I'm crazy. <clears throat> as you can see, they turned those down. And that's not even the copyright violation. I'm going to show you how they're using um, artwork. Now, here's their interview release. Now, when it first came, there was no title. It was Untitled Flat Earth Project. Obviously, if they would have had a Flat Earth film called Behind the Curve, um, they wouldn't have duped or fooled a lot of people. Or these people, you know, I would have said, why are they in this? It would have tipped me off that they're, they're fakes and their actors... You know, they're going to be part of a, a, a propaganda hit piece on me. So it was just left untitled Flat Earth Project. So then, you know, people that did participate could say, well, I was a victim. It's like, well, if you were such a victim, that's what they're saying now, um, February 24th, 25th, 20, 
19. If you were such a victim, how come you bought plane tickets and flew to each festival screening of Behind the Curve? And while you were watching it, you were texting and Instagramming and Facebook messaging and making um, plugs on your YouTube channels how this was a pro Flat Earth film. So your timeline doesn't work out with your story, Patricia Steer, Mark Sargent. Okay? And so we're going to slowly, I mean, prove that these are bad actors. And I mean it. Like, actors taking, doing takes, this is not a documentary film, with the documentary film producer's direction, directing subjects in a Flat Earth documentary is not a documentary. And you're going to see that. And boom. So it says here, interview release is given without the promise of compensation. I hereby okay, acknowledge that all the results and proceeds of my service are work made for hire. And if not, I hereby irrevo irrevo irrevocably grant and assign to be owned by you all rights, title, interest of my interview and performance. I say you have been induced to proceed with the production, distribution, blah, blah, exploitation. Basically, it's like they can use the image... Uh, voice, performance, and likeness in connection with advertising and promotion of the documentary throughout the world in perpetuity. You know, they could, uh, they could take the interviewee, they agree that they, may be, it, that they can exhibit in the use of a documentary. It's not a documentary because they're doing takes. So there's a violation right there. And a material concerning by me, by any means of exhibition. So it's like they could have all sorts of good stuff being said. They're not going to use it. They're just going to paint them in their mother's kitchen, you know, and her making chicken noodle soup and then some sort of like Harry Met Sally flat earth nerd love affair. Um, and then just how people's lives have been like destroyed by going flat and then failed experiment. I don't want to be a part of something uh, that I cannot know for sure is going to um, take me and paint me in a false light without my talking points or the origin of how this all started, which is an undebunkable comedy routine, which has set the entire world into trigger mode, trying to find a, a proof that I didn't strip as fake or a belief of the globe. That was the performance. And this is a performance that um, I've briefed, you know, um, Senior management at the Just for Laughs Festival, the French side, Just Pour Rire, um, comedy management in New York City. Um, they profiled me in meetings at ABC, uh, CBS, where I was not going to flinch and compromise this ethos I have as an entertainer, where it's like my entertainment is taking something people think is real and then stripping it, stripping down the proofs to see at what point. It's really a belief system or an ideology that's not even uh, based on, on universal, accessible uh, POV, point of view, that everybody can readily sense through the scientific method um, and experience as real. You can't experience the globe as real. It's an image. You've never been to space. You can't experience gravity or... or it, an object is large enough, it will attract another large object the size of the Earth. You can't see that two big objects attracted to each other that are Earth size because, Your Honor, I mean, it's just, it's all, you can't experience it. It's all equations that are glued together by images that are actually paintings painted by people like me. And this was one of the main triggers right here is this question photo. Okay, or paint. And this image, this image is been reproduced as unauthorized reproduction in film format being sold for $4.99. You don't do that to, to artwork. That's a no-no. It's a big effing no-no. And it's been keeping me up at night. It's uh, put strain on my uh, personal relationships, my marriage. It's smearing my artwork, taking it out of context. And that's the exact reason why I sent out the deal memo with those conditions to find out if this production was truly a documentary or some sort of film production 
under the disguise of a documentary, hell-bent on having me cede copyright to these characters I've accused of plagiarism and have complete access and rights to uh, edit me in any manner they wish, out of context, with an agenda to smear me, not bring up an expedition, not bring up how it started, not show this shirt which triggered the world, because it's a shirt I painted, you think is a photo, and, and for profit. That's my fair use presentation and uh, pretext for showing behind the curve today by Delta 5 Productions while I do commentary in fair use assessment and analysis of a film that has violated this copyright. Okay? And we're going to do that one more time so everybody can be clear on this. Right? <clears throat> Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act, 1976 on YouTube. I've seen this and wondering, would it be fair use if I'd done a reaction to another YouTube video, non and gave credit, would that, would that be fair use? Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act allowances made for fair use for purpose such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a, is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips, the balance in favor of use, of fair use. Now I made my case, and then I showed it. And this artwork is the subject of a film that has violated copyright in insofar as they've sent correspondence, I sent conditions, they said, no, we don't agree to them. I said, I'm not participating, and they did it anyways. And they do not show the YouTube window frame with like the drop down menus of videos and the title where they could say they were filming a commons platform. It's a straight shot, the shot I filmed from a camera I purchased in a studio I was renting of a painting I was painting and spent four months on and used as decor and data and visual candy to fit a narrative that smears me for profit. It's a copyright violation in the most virulent form of violation where it's an IP rape because they use the artist's work and they're selling it out of the moral universe and original intention behind the creation of the original work. They've altered it, they've tampered with it, and they're exploiting it for profit. Under copyright law, especially with the paper trail of correspondence, it's illegal. Behind the curve is illegal. And so any claim that I'm copyright violating when I'm using fair use on a film that's in copyright violation of this artwork uh, will be noted. YouTube is on notice right now through this video. This is a service notice to YouTube to cease and desist any collusion or partnership acquiescing, aiding and abetting these false accusations that this film here right now any false accusation by Delta Phi Productions or Caroline Clark or Daniel Clark that this video right now, this presentation right now, is a somehow a copyright violation of their uh, work called Behind the Curve. So YouTube and Google, this video, let it serve as a service of notice that you are on notice, okay, that you may be aiding and abetting a copyright violator in their false accusation that I'm copyright violating their film, which uses my likeness and my work after 
a correspondence of emails between me and the producers stating I will not participate and you cannot use my work because you're not abiding these conditions. So this is a service notice to YouTube because YouTube took down our live streaming privileges. So I'm sorry this is tedious and technical because I'm also going to be showing it to several lawyers. And I'm, al I'm also going to be using it as proof that I'm being harassed. Um, so then that's a whole other case. Psychological harassment. That was the, the, the end and smear. Defamation. Character assassination. Totally out of context. The conditions were so that I wouldn't participate in something like that. It would be an objective. This is what I represent as a political scientist, a hyper-realist painter, and a performer who brought this to the comedy stage um, with the intention that it would force people to really look at, at true form what proof they have that the earth is a globe. And that's where the comedy begins. And it, it was all part of a project, an event, a, a huge event that was being scripted after that routine on the NASA channel, the NASA canal, on YouTube, which would then push an expedition film, which literally pushes the globe over the edge. You know, pushing the globe over the edge. That's, that was the expedition film. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to watch this. Um, I'm going to take a little pee break. And we're going to resume now with a fair use assessment of um, whether or not this is a documentary or a propaganda production um, with an agenda to uh, gaslight, harass, and paint in a false light um, the entertainer, artist, and political scientist who, um, who created a monologue on stage that triggered the flat earth phenomenon and I declined from participating in this documentary because I didn't believe it was a documentary. I believed it was a it was an agenda to, um, to uh, smear me. So let's take a look at, uh, without further ado, this, um, this production that claims to be a balanced, objective documentary. Um, that violates the artwork behind here. As Delta Vibe Productions. So where are you right now? Okay, so that's an actor. That was a take. Um, so right away, that's that's a violation of one of the first violations of documentary film is to actually prod, coach, direct subjects of a documentary. So this film was admitted to the Hot Documentary Festival in Toronto. And then right away, off the bat, uh, any professional actor, which I am, and as well, any professional documentary, uh, anybody who's a professional in the, in, in the world of documentary filmmaking, which I also am as, a, as a, an assistant to uh, documentary filmmaker, an award-winning documentary filmmaker, Academy Award-nominated documentary filmmaker, Barbara Herbick, my first cousin, who uh, did a Stitch for Time and did a movie on um, uh, Catholic priests killed in uh, Nazi Germany, um, and, and also a film about Russian art. So I'm very aware of the ethos, working under my cousin, of you know, the protocols of what makes a documentary film versus an editorial, a mockumentary, or reality TV. Very well versed. And this, if this is a documentary film, then we've lost our footing with the art of documentary filmmaking because that was a take. And I could say that as a professional actor. You think you're in a globe spinning at a thousand miles an hour that globe is spinning around the sun at 60,000 plus miles an hour. Is that Again, we see cartoon imagery, which was like, I'm not saying this is plagiarism, but uh, on a separate note, 
It's funny how there's going to be the use of cartoon imagery without ever stating that tenet from my monologue that the globe is backed by imagery that is painted and is animation and CGI. No real video or camera footage, except that one alleged photo from the Apollo mission of, uh, from the moon. But we haven't been back since. Solar system is flying sideways through the galaxy at half a million miles an hour. And that galaxy is going through the rest of the universe at millions of miles an hour. And you feel nothing. In reality, you are actually in a giant planetarium slash terrarium slash soundstage slash Hollywood backlot that is so big that you and everyone you know and everyone you've ever known never figured it out. At 17,000 months. So the flat earth has got animation but then they show realistic imagery. Um, but this could easily be a round window. Um, this could easily be a set. I mean, it's black and white. Um, how can we have them returned? So. With an hour, the second stage leaves the abandoned first stage far behind as it soars 5,000 miles downrange. The curvature of the Earth is plainly visible. Delta Five, very military sounding production company. Another round window. See, the round window's never brought up. That was the origin of, uh, you know, taking apart the image or the images of the globe, which are painted. Round window. Now, as you can see here, they used the footage, I think, from Bart Sabrell's A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon. And you could clearly see I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a shadow here, and then it goes away. So what's going on there with the Earth? There was suddenly like a huge cloud, and it's like less round. More of a round window. You know, this is the plastic or the glass. Our planet is beautiful. So this is the use of YouTube's as a commons public format. So this they could probably get away with because YouTube is a commons platform, meaning it's not, it claims to not be a producer of content. We're going to build a case here um, that there's a conflict of interest between YouTube Prime or YouTube Red and the fact that it's also claimed to be a commons platform, which is public. That's basically like the phone companies. They're communication companies where they plug you in the wall and they don't go, well, we're not going to allow you to produce a conversation with your wife because of what you said about Venezuela last night. That's where phone companies start becoming producers of content on their platform and not commons. Commons is like, it doesn't matter what you say, we can listen to it, but we're not going to block you from talking to your wife or other people about whatever opinions you have. Um, it's not to say they're not going to like show up park behind the, your building or, your, or across the street from your house because you said something, but they're not going to block you. Um, the minute they start blocking and deciding what content's on the platform, they're no longer um, covered by the FCC as a commons platform, like phone companies. So we're going to watch some more. So this is what they did. Here they can use him because he's on YouTube. It's a great big plane. Method or words Google Flat Earth were carved in Mount Rubido. How would you feel if I see the So they've they've been rolling back that so it's been four million. That's funny because like three years ago, total search results was like eight million, and then every six months it's like rolled back down to four or seven million. So Google is is got skin in the game in kind of engineering a narrative uh, or, or holding back um, the spread of this or at least the cosmetic appearance of how how big it's getting because we've been screen capping view counts that are higher than this two three years ago and I have those screen caps and those screen caps are legal any screen cap is legal so if you see something and you want to document how it's going to change in time you screen cap it 
It's legally admissible. It's a screen capture of the date, time, by file, of something that was on the web. You don't view hot tilts from space. Now, he would have a case, and he's very upset, this gentleman, Dell. And Dell, if you're listening, Because, you know, they're not sh oh, well, they got a bit of it there, right? So that's what they're doing. And I don't know if he got approached. I don't know if he got approached. Commons. So yeah, Christine O'Malley, producer, who also did a film um, that tried to control the narrative about Sandy Hook. So anybody who had an alternative, like Wolf, Wolfgang Halbeck, who's a, a uh, you know, preschool, primary school, high school um, security consultant uh, to prevent mass shootings. He said that everything was wrong about the narrative of Sandy Hook. Um, and he's, he's been sued and they've dropped the suit just days before, like the victim's families, just the days before um, he was supposed to, you know, be sued by these victim families for like traumatizing or smear or lying or whatever it is. And that's what's triggered the entire Sandy Hook thing. They made a movie making people like him crazy, but he's an actual federal security consultant for school safety against shootings and armed gunmen and stuff. And they made another movie um, that would protect the propaganda of global warming amidst the people who say it isn't warming. So that's the kind of productions that Christine O'Malley's involved in. And she's behind behind the curve and behind Delta Five Productions. Around window, a lot of chemtrails. People who think the world is flat is growing. Thousands, if not millions of people. A lie is a lie, even if everybody believes it. These people live amongst us. I just want to point this out. What drives such fury? So that's the producer that was emailing me. Um, claiming that she wanted to have my whole story. So I wanted to police that with those conditions. She could have picked and chosen which ones she wanted to cover. There was absolutely no complete rejection of any condition. Why are people flocking to this absurd belief? So you got a director here. Is this like a documentary film? Like at what level are you directing documentary topic? Well, you know, take a look at some. You tell me if these scenes look like they're acting. This is uh, where Mark Sargent lives. So for me, as a guy who studied Meisner technique, uh, trained as a professional actor, um, what he's doing right there is kind of like substitution of self-consciousness or the director is relying on that. So it looks like a real human that's self-conscious of the scene. I'm reading through this as he's aware, maybe his, his mom, his wife, his mom isn't uh, aware um, of what's going on here. But there seems to be a certain level where he's playing into uh, a, the, the director's narrative of how the director's choosing to produce Flat Earth. And the indication to this is the core sponsor emails right up to, I'd say, I'd say November 2017. 
and the time it takes to do cell animation. When I say up to November, to me, to be in their film. And then the conference, and then boom, in January, it's already at the Toronto Hot Dogs Festival. So they had about a month and a half to edit all the footage. So where did you get time to do cell animation after you collected all your footage? This is indicative that they already had a narrative that they were hired to do about the flat earth. Therefore, this is not a, an objective documentary. This is an editorial. And not only is it an editorial, I see scenes here where these subjects are being coached like they're doing takes and they're actors acting invisibly uh, amidst real people like their mother, which is kind of shameful. Chicken noodle soup, iced applesauce, and some rolls. Homemade rolls? Ho homemade rolls and homemade jam. He smiles. Uh, I don't deserve you. Okay, here we go. So, Mark called and said that he was a member of the Flat Earth Society. Yep. So, the Flat Earth Society um, is like the go to for Hollywood or MSM. So it's like, they need to control the narrative so people don't start inquiring about Antarctica, doing a mass expedition to just finally like, let's just do a ground crossing of Antarctica and we'll prove it's a ball. That's all human beings have to do. Um, they'll never bring that up to Flatter Society. They'll try to dismiss it. They'll try to make it look crazy. They wanna just confine you to the amount of continental uh, land masses you see on a globe, but on a disc. And the disc itself ends up being as much academic poppycock as the suppositions and, and assumptions of the globe. In that there's an ice wall, like there's gravity holding everything to the earth. There's an ice wall holding everything in. Uh, it's a disc. Um, I think he even brings up gravity. It's like, why do you need gravity if it's geocentric? So this guy is basically the new face of the Flat Earth Society. He admits it right here. And in this film, while he's producing it, he said he has nothing to do with it online, per se, and we've called him out on that. Here he is basically last year in 2017, way after 2015, he's basically saying he's a card-carrying member of that society, which has always been the go-to for MSM to dismiss extended geography flat plane. Like there's just more continents and solar circuits rotating around geomagnetic ponds that have continental land masses that huddle around magnetite meteors that are magnetic poles, like the magnetic north pole, and the continents that huddle around it with a solar circuit going around and spiral around our area of known Earth. Um, you can get biblical with that, and even the Bible corroborates when they're kicked out of the garden, uh, Cain heads to Nod where he finds a wife. So there's other humans in other land areas. Merovicia, Aaron, ancient uh, Aaron, uh, Vedic, um, even old Turkish maps over a thousand years old show like tropical landscape in Antarctica. Coastlines are mapped out like today's maps of the coastlines of Antarctica. Things match up. How did they know what was going on? How much has been known by the brass um, royals and elites uh, of century old that run your, your banks now and your empire? So that are, that's being hidden from the public. You could look at a paranoid sort of security perimeter called Antarctic Treaty Project and I'll, you just can't go there. So this guy's feeding the narrative of the old flat earth controlled opposition or let's cover that gate with the flat earth society. And here he is, he's, he's claiming he's a, he's a member of that. And I said, oh Mark, what are you on to now? How do you know it's a globe? Well, it's because you saw this. It's not like you've been up there in your Jetsons car, nobody's got a spaceship. You've been looking. So, this looks a little acty, um, like it takes. Um, they could play like he's a real person that's self-conscious. I don't see it like that. Um, I see it, the bad acting and the actiness is playing into the, your suspension of disbelief it's a real person who's self-conscious and looks stupid on camera. This topic here is from the NASA channel. It's from the character that I created that's pushing for an expedition film across Antarctica. So this is a talking point number one, um, but we're, we're heading towards the main copyright violation that's undoubtedly a reproduction, a print um, in the millions on Netflix of this painting in a shot that I produced that they're using without my consent.
but we'll move forward. So, mind the peanut gallery, it's fair use. This for 30 years, yeah, you throw that away. This is the Dalton version of the Flat Earth model. The South Pole, it's like a 200 foot wall of ice, straight up, game of. No one knows that, unless we do an expedition. Throne style. So he just did a plug, uh, he said Truman Show, now Game of Thrones. So this is this documentary seems to be like a ticker tape parade of ads for Hollywood films. And the sun and the moon are just lights in the sky. I love movies, always have. And so I try to compare it to the Truman Show. Okay, so here is the use of a Hollywood film called The Truman Show, starring Jim Carrey. Um, did they pay rights for that? What I'm getting at is like, you sent an interview release for, you, for me to hand over and cede my copyright to people I'm accusing of plagiarism, and you say, we won't pay you your per diem, um, but you're gonna make millions off the topic my monologue uh, generated, and you're gonna have plagiarists in it, people I've accused of plagiarists that I don't even think are, are, um, are real, uh, legitimate, authentic people. They're, they've been put in by a production company, covert production company, where one's gonna create event and content for another production company to do this documentary um, and then associate it with the Flatter Society. So uh, the comedy monologue looks crazy or it's never brought up or the individual who started this entire topic conver of conversation and the phenomenon uh, is painted in a false light. And did you pay for this, Carolyn Clark? Because it seems you already have a narrative established which kind of contradicts that you're doing a documentary film. Especially when we get to the cell animation and the time it takes to do cell animation. And we'll be subpoenaing the people who did your cartoons. So we're gonna see at what point you established a skewed angle and narrative that you were hired to, to do on me. And all you need to do is trick me, which, which will indicate misrepresentation. But that's the more complex issue. The main issue at hand is reproducing this painting. That for sure we caught them. And it ain't on a comments platform. It's full shot. So let's keep going here. They got footage from the movie Truman Show. Yeah, the Truman Show was just a giant Hollywood stage 20 miles wide. If you built a, a stage that was 1,000 miles wide, how many people could you fool besides just Truman? Of course you're gonna have questions. Everybody does because it's like, okay, how does everything work? Now you have to pay for this. Unless the people who produced it said, we'll let you use footage, and they had a condition, it has to slant towards pushing the globe and making flat earthers look um, psychologically unstable and don't ever bring up their the actual proofs or any of the statements that Matt Parlin had in his conditions uh, to protect the monologue that triggered the topic in the first place. So are they making conditions to allow free footage or did she pay for this? Because I don't think they'd want to be in a film that's promoting flat earth, right? Especially on Netflix. I'm gonna take a break right now, something to think about. Hello, okay. Here's a perfect example if you wanna see real quick. So like those buildings in the distance, right out there, that's Seattle. You shouldn't be able to see it. There should be hundreds of feet of curvature between us and them. You should barely be able to see the tops of those buildings. When you're doing the curvature of the Earth, here's what the Earth looks like. What we're saying is, and of course this is exaggerated, is that if you're here, eventually, if there's an object far enough, you won't be able to see it over here because the curvature of the Earth puts it on the other side of the hill. And you could say, oh, well, it's refraction, or it's atmospherical, that sort of mirage. It's like, no, 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 not in every weather condition, not in every light condition, science is having a problem combating what we're so doing. That's, that's, that's a good point. That's about it. We call him he who shall not be named, says that it's a growing anti-intellectual movement which borders on the end of civilization and democracy as we know it. The Earth isn't flat. So here's a man who's getting paid a SAG wage uh, to appear on Comedy Central to do damage control for the scientific community because Flat Earth is gaining, uh, gaining steam. The monologue was, he, he got a SAG wage, a bunch of comedy writers for this show got paid, and 
did you get this footage for free, Carolyn Clark? Or did you have to pay a per diem or the rights for it? What's interesting is that when you think about this film right now, which has this painting behind me, and it's charging $3.99 or $10, three four nine nine on Amazon, ten dollars a part of like subscription at Netflix or whatever Netflix pays. This guy getting a salary, um, uh, Mark Sargent doing conferences selling the tickets for two hundred dollars. Um, people having mixers all over the U.S., Canada, the world in different languages. People putting up websites, having web developers hosting. People paying web developers. People buying P900 Nikon zooms that otherwise would not be uh, avid amateur photographers of the horizon to prove that it's a flat or to see if they still see the boat or, or like things at a distance that should be obscured by a uh, damage control by the news. News reporters talking about this. Um, you know, every journalist at the Kyrie Irving NBA conference where they asked him if it was flat, they were all getting paid by NBC, CBS to write notes about that per hour salary. In that room itself, there was probably $80,000. Comedy Central, the advertisers that pay to be on this show, every advertiser on every YouTube channel that's saying the earth is flat or saying it's not flat, and every advertiser dollar that YouTube makes, Google makes. We're looking at probably about $452 million was generated, um, and that's a modest sum just off people trying to prove it's flat, saying it's flat, or doing flat earth, pro flat earth content, or having to get up on TV and debunk the flat earth or do damage control for it. That's $452 million that otherwise would not have been injected in the world's economy. Matter of fact, people are probably going out to NASA more than ever now, going out to SpaceX rocket launches more than ever and paying $47 a pop to see if there's really a rocket going up. So I've been putting money into the uh, pockets and the salaries of people that work at NASA. Um, this guy here, walking around as a pundit, being paid a salary to try to do damage control in the flat earth spreading. Comedy writers, late night talk show hosts, celebrities, movies, counterspin. And then you got like telescopes being sold, uh, Nikon P9, P900 uh, camera lenses. Lasers, experiments, uh, documentaries, people filling up their cars to go out to prove it's flat. We're probably way over $452 million, folks, in the last three years, five years. I mean, modest, and that's in the American economy, not worldwide. So did she, the documentary filmmaker, pay for this? Everybody's making money off this. And meanwhile, I've got to come out here to fix a leaky roof. It has nothing to do with this. The owners um, know about this content and they're threatening to evict me now um, if I don't perform certain duties and then calling me off work sites to come here or they're going to confiscate the property and secure my paintings if I don't execute repairs on the roof um, without notice. I've got to drop everything in Florida and come out here while this film is out. So I'm suspecting that this film, Painting Me in the False Light, is now affecting my personal business, my life, my relationships, and my marriage. And I'm not with my son right now. So I'm pretty pissed off, especially if I find out through subpoena that she was paying for the rights of this or abiding by conditions from the producers and the network that has this, the ownership of this footage on how it's to be used in her film. And we have a conflict of of, uh, of uh, interests here. This is called gravity. Or, or weight. It's heavier than the air. Versus science. Again, science is science just throws math at us. Whereas we go and say, hey, by the way, there's Seattle. You can see it right now with your camera. That's it. A picture says a thousand words. I was well versed in just about every conspiracy you can think of. I had heard about it. It's a planned shot Flatter, with the, the, the clock behind it. It was the DVD. We have some animation here. You knew you were never going to open because the title was horrible. So this is the beginning of them using animation. Whenever talking about flat Earth, where its animation is used to prove the flat Earth, but the whole monologue is that animation is there to support a heliocentric, 
equations that say the Earth is a globe, but high detail imagery that fools you that it's a photo. That's my monologue. And so here they are doing the counter, uh, almost like substitutional plagiarism of what my monologue triggered to associate the flat earth with animation. And this is where we get into timelines of them still trying to reach out by email to be in their film and how long it takes to do cell animation and edit a film and then have it in hot docs. There's gonna be a problem there if you know anything about professional production and whether or not this is a legitimate documentary or it had as its aim to, to collude with Metatron, Mark Sargent, Okay, to, to, to misrepresent their uh, intentions when um, communicating with me, to trick me into a film that would have me see copyright and exploit my image out of light, out of, in false light, to smear and damage my reputation and my brand, which is to have an expedition across Antarctica. Like how to make a poop sandwich, or poop sandwich volume three, but when you get bored enough with normal conspiracies, you're looking for something new. There was a certain novelty to it. I do think that he gets a little off on some of the conspiracy. I don't think that everything is a conspiracy. Mom, Mom's always been the whole glass half full, and I'll go on and say, well, the glass is probably controlled by some sort yeah, of right. sinister group. There was a German video, the guy was talking about flight paths in the Southern Hemisphere, how they didn't make sense. Okay, so I said that if it's, if it's flat, then all the flights have to hub through the north. They do. And I showed maps of that. So he says some German guy, you know, German guy Cesar is using my talking point. And he's using now him to now plagiarize me via this person. So this, this is all after me, then Cesar repeating what I'm saying. And then he puts it into detailed play. But the maps are there. You could, if you want to go to like Europe and you want to go to Polynesia, everything is hubbing through the north. That's a talking point from a copyright work on my YouTube channel that is triggered from the monologue as a comedian that I, that I put out there. And the channel and its content is there to push an expedition. So he's using always some other uh, indirect plagiarist or copy or mirror of my work to plagiarize or be the central character of this film. And they tried to rope me in to see copyright completely. And it didn't work. And now they're in copyright violation of this painting. You'll see it coming up. Then I stumbled across a video by Matt Boylan. And he was the contract artist for NASA. I guess this is the photo of the Hubble telescope taking a picture of itself. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And at a high-level NASA party out in the Hamptons, they told him the GPS system doesn't work out in Antarctica because the world's flat. Oh, they all flat. And uh, my superior had a quite a weird look on his face and watching me to see how I would take all this. This. So then they associate me with this. I never assumed any shape or model. Just... Let's push this globe right over the edge of Antarctica with an expedition, mass civilian expedition, not one guy in photos of one guy they choose and they tell him where to go. That's it. And so then this film comes out after that, after the channel, after the monologue, after the channel, after me using the channel to bring this expedition. This interrupts my work and my brand to smear me and, and, and attempted through production to have me seed copyright by an interview release form, which, the agenda was to have me um, second fiddle this guy. I didn't fall for it. Um, so they had to change plans with their, uh, their narrative and then paint me as a paranoid psycho and these guys are unstable as a result of me. So it's like they all lent themselves out to this production and none of them had conditions to be in it so they could protect their own brand if they claimed to be real researchers, which is interesting. So this is what it is. What do you think your first reaction is going to be? You know, that's not what it is. It's BS. No way. If you don't make fun of this the first time you see it, there's probably something wrong with you. I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth. Everybody that becomes a flat earther does the same thing. They say, it's a stupid idea. I'm going to debunk flat earth. And then they get sucked in like La Brea Tarsus. 
when it came to this, I looked at it for literally nine months before I finally turned around. The Jerry Maguire moment that I had, I, I remember the date, I remember the time, it was February 10th, 2015, 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30 in the morning to be exact. And I woke up and I said, this is now going to flip. Once I had my arguments down, I made the series of videos, I tried to be as rational as possible, I did a lot of editing, and I made connections to dots that no one had done before. This is a Reader's Digest version, containing many of the interesting parts of the Flat Earth Theory. First question is invariably, is this a joke? Because it's a joke, right? And that's where we start, because it's one of our two basic childhood facts. One plus one equals two, and the Earth is a globe. When I put the clues out, I partially thought that this whole thing was going to crash apart because I thought some guy with a master's in astrophysics or astronomy was going to call me up and say, you forgot to do this math, forgot to carry the two, and that's it, you screwed it up, you can, you can shut down your channel now and everyone can go home. The first part of the clue is the utter lack of non-stop flights from anywhere in this southern hemisphere or in the flat earth model, the land masses closest to the outer ring. So I spend day after day looking at the Plane Finder global map. I need to watch a few as they cross either the South Pacific or Indian Oceans. For the first 30, 45 days, I was just holding my breath. I wait for an ocean plane. And I wait. And I wait. And I wait some more. Hours pass. Days pass. And no red planes to entertain me. And before I even got the, the first five clues out, people started responding to me. Someone said, I want to talk to you about this. In fact, it was a debunker site, the small time debunker. We went into it and then he started reviewing the clues. And next thing you know, he was, he was on my side. And then another podcast picked up on him and then it just started leapfrogging. And we had Mark Sargent. Your organization was amazing. Hi, Mark Sargent. Hi. Who better to bring on than our very up and coming? So basically, here he is like um, manufacturing the narrative um, that suddenly everything took off. Well, here's the situation he's a no name. And after every video that I was talking about, you could say it's the algorithms while well, he was the only one on the net, but he was being recommended. I was on my own channel watching my own videos and when they would finish, he would suddenly automatically play. Um, so there were some algorithms that were being used in favor of him by Google. So when I said last week, it was the end of, uh, Sorry, it was like last week, as in the, around the 15th of February, that I was going to do a free screening of Behind the Curve on a, a clone channel, or there was going to be a free screening. It was a litmus test to see at what point YouTube is harassing or working with this production. Because I just put the title up as a YouTube video. Uh, set the timer, set the reminder for all my subscribers that this free screening behind the curve was gonna happen. Within two hours and only 200 people on the chat, Delta Phi Productions uh, made a copyright claim on two YouTube channels, one saying it was gonna play on this other channel. There was no copyright violation. Clickbait happens all the time. These characters have behind the curve in their t uh, YouTube titles all the time. For the last you know, year, they've been promoting this film before it came out on Netflix. And I put it in my title, I never aired the film, and Delta Five Productions somehow gets wind of it out of only 200 people in the, being in the chat before it would have, was aired. And they panic, make a strike, I see it's Delta Five Productions. Who warned them? Well, this film, okay, has been sent to me by this person, the person claiming to be Mark Sargent, or whatever his name is. This person here, okay, is claiming that he, he sent me the film by email, and so the film that's playing right now was sent by this person here. So we can do a digital trail if we need to. Um, this person sent me the file that's playing right now on this computer. 
So he could be an invisible producer in this whole thing. It's to be determined. So a producer of this, or a person plagiarizing my work that's in this, that I wouldn't see copyright to the producers of this film to be on camera in this film next to, sent me this film. You follow? Quick rising star, Mark Sargent. Now I go into chat rooms and people freeze. Mark Sargent's here. Oh my god, just, just be normal, be cool. I didn't want to wake up and do this. It was something that just seemed to happen. I didn't choose Flutter. Flutter chose me. So I spent day after day looking at the plane finder global map. I need to watch a few as they cross either the South Pacific or the Indian Oceans. I wait for an ocean plane. I first heard of people thinking that the Earth was flat, you know, in elementary school, but in the context of history. I think it was in the last couple years that I heard that people are still believing this and making a lot of videos on it. So I started watching them because I was curious and it's, uh, it's something. Oh, what, what, what's, this, what's this guy doing? Seems to be going south. Where are you going, buddy? Yeah, where, where's that coming from, if not the Southern Hemisphere? This is a very easy test to perform. I'm not sure when I first heard about Flat Earthers. Um, it was probably about five years or so ago. Uh, probably on the internet, I'm sure. I saw an article uh, maybe six months ago. I found it fascinating, right? Because I'm like, if, if, if these people can pull it off, they're probably really, really smart. First time I ever heard about flat earthers was, I think when I was in space last, and I saw the stuff on social media. I can't believe I'm talking about this. Okay, did you pay, did you, did Carolyn Clark pay uh, Scott Kelly to be in the film, in that interview? Did they um, pay to have that footage released? Did he say, Okay, you can, you're doing a flat earth documentary. I'll let you use it as long as you're not trying to prove the earth is flat or it's like you're making fun of these people. And it's like, okay, use it for free. So it's like, when conditions like that are being negotiated in order to have stock footage from other owners, but the person who triggered the topic worldwide, the producers don't even negotiate any of the conditions, it's not a documentary film. You follow? It's a film that was, it's a form of uh, harassing an artist and publicly shaming and defaming him by painting him in false light. How do flat earth conspiracy theories make you feel, Leo? <laughs> Again, a lot about the feeling and the psychology, not about like, how do we get here? And yet, they're going to even admit I'm the or originator. I wanted to show the origin of this entire phenomenon. A comedy monologue. That was one of my conditions. I think someone told me maybe that there's still people who believe that the earth is flat. And so I Google, and then you find websites and YouTube videos. 879 videos this man is terrific and i was fascinated and i just like jumped right in and i was probably in that spiral for three or four hours and i ended up subscribing to a podcast a flat earth podcast and listening this like others in the series is something you just riveting i would watch this for hours they're wacky they're bizarre but yet they find this audience that believes them takes them as gospel there's enough of them, they can't just all... So that person there is, uh, has also, he's going to figure in this, they're never going to mention his name, which is interesting, they'll mention everybody else's name and title, um, except this individual. Now there's another reason why I didn't want to be involved in this production. This person here is the subject of fraud. He said he's Math Powerland LLC on CBS News. 
CBS News didn't do any uh, fact checking and this person is on record, I need his real name and his address. He needs to be served as well because this person um, who used to do videos attacking the group Anonymous um, on behalf of Scientology all over YouTube is now claiming he's a flat earther and his model of flat earth is there's more land, but he's not sure if it's flat. And he used to do trolling uh, against a, the anonymous group for doing campaigns to expose the Church of Scientology. I don't know who gets up in the morning and says, I'm going to defend Scientology all day for free. You know what I mean? And do counter PR uh, for Scientology against the group Anonymous that's exposing details about the Church of Scientology. Who, 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 I'm not, you know, I'm going to... I'm gonna, I'm gonna support. I'm not a Scientologist, but I'm, I'm gonna defend Scientology. Who does that? So we have him on record, voice recognition, uh, same style. But now he's a flat earther, and this person, um, also working in bad faith and bad intentions, misrepresenting himself through uh, correspondence. Uh, a week after, through a few email exchanges, he goes on CBS, pretends to be me, without asking me if he could, he could uh, uh, defraud me or pretend to be me on national news on behalf of my monologue for my work, which is trying to push an expedition film, which, uh, which is to push the globe over the edge of the earth. You can't just all be people wandering around with tinfoil hats all the time. Like, these are fairly normal people, at least some of them. We go in a little sports bar. A bartender runs over, and she goes, you guys talking about flat earth? Uh, yeah, why? She goes, high five. Did you go into the office? Is someone a flat earther? You, know, you go to a restaurant. Is you know the person making your food a flat earther? Mason? I don't know. The very next day, I'm flying out, and I'm wearing a I am Mark Sargent shirt. And you know where they go through the bag screen. This uh. So they're talking about how big this thing's gotten, more than why it got that big. It's a good thing I declined to be to participate in this because they didn't abide by my conditions. But they still broke broke copyright and are exploiting me and my work out of context. And this painting, which is behind this film, is in this film. We're going to do a surreal exposition right now on copyright violation. Black kid, he motions me like in Fight Club. You Mark Sergeant for real? I go, yeah, why? And he goes. I'm not kidding you. He winks at me and he goes, that's my name too. And he hands me the bag without even checking it. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, five. This is actually an acting technique called Meisner, where you give the, the subject an independent activity and things to do and say while they're doing lines so they look real. It's an actual technique out of Sanford Meisner uh, acting class. Years ago, I started doing this whole grain power program, bouncing balls off hammers, working on my penmanship, working on my memory, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, and uh, about 14 months ago, my brain coach, Michael Lavery, said, Nathan, you gotta look into flat earth. And then the more I researched it, and then I found out that it's actually the, the biblical cosmology is a geocentric cosmology. Then I realized why they're hiding the truth. It's because they don't want anyone to know anything. They want people dumb, blind, deaf to the truth, so they can inject you with their vaccines and their public schooling and this heliocentric model, which is basically for sun worship. Did you know they made up dinosaurs? People in the school system to uh, perpetuate this six billion year old Earth. Oh, wait, the math doesn't work out. 14 billion year old Earth. So I actually ran into a NASA employee at Starbucks, asked him why NASA means conceive in Hebrew. Technically, it's the word in the Shah, but it sounds so similar. You you hate Americans? Is that it? Excuse me? Yeah. How the hell did you get that? Well, I just got kicked out of Starbucks for asking NASA employee questions. 
I ended up getting kicked out of a bunch of Facebook groups. So uh, then I started the group, the official Flat Earth and Globe discussion. Uh, Probably because you weren't authentic. You know what I mean? It was slow start at first. I just added all my friends and said, hey, talk about Flat Earth. There's no cursing, no insults. That was about 14 months ago, and that's blossomed into 53,000 members. Excuse me. Can I ask you a question? Anyone ever told you the Earth is flat? I just feel like I have an obligation to tell people you don't live on a spinning ball. If you're going around harassing people, you're not really like enlightening them or having them think critically about anything. And so it's almost like this person was sent out in public um, to just go around annoying people. I'm telling them for years you didn't come from monkeys. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I run the largest flat earth group in the world. We're actually filming a doc. Actually, the, the whole flat earth group in the world is from my monologue. Documentary about it, so. That's how it's done right there. Well, here's some flat. He goes, I'm irrelevant, this guy. You know, like, I control this thing now. This guy's like full on, like, sociopath, ego egotist. And you tell me if he portrays um, the scientific method to have a final crossing of Antarctica. Well, the only scientific method human beings can apply to, you know, come up around and then prove it's a globe. But not just one guy or two guys that are ex-military or they choose and they go to an area they're told to and turn right. Many nations have to be involved here. It's a world peace project. Music? <laughs> Next level. Next level. We got some good books right here. Firmament, Vaulted Dome of the Earth. George Orwell, 1984. Must read. This is Edward Hendry's masterpiece, The Greatest Lie on Earth. I'll just read you a little bit from the table of contents real quick. The first chapter is Samuel Robotham proves the Earth is flat. The idea of people have a flat Earth is just totally wrong. You know, they think they're total idiots and they live in their mom's basement and they believe everything anyone tells them. Live in their mom's basement. And then it's going to cut to Mark, right? So there wasn't like a bit of a tongue-in-cheek, let's dismiss these people. I mean, you got cell animation, that takes a while to do. And then, usually it takes a year, or maybe less, for a good documentary to be edited. So this is just a whip them out smear pop propaganda uh, package with an already decided, you know, story, angle, and narrative. And I didn't, I didn't participate in it, because I knew that this was... This has been planned and hatched since Mark Sargent was created, the name, the label, and he showed up in 2015. And I, I said that this guy showed up as a middleman so that somebody can't be directly accused of copyright violation. So they're gonna have him show up through YouTube with YouTube assisting his videos to be recommended to everybody who's looking into the topic after my videos or first before my videos so that a production could come and make events off him, and then another production would make films, and it would look like they're not copyright violating me. Quite the opposite. We test everything. We're all and then send the interview, interviewee release form for me to do the final nail in my work. No. All either super successful or doing our own thing, and I've met hundreds of flat earthers, and none of them are living in their mom's basement, so. Okay, that, and then it goes to Mark Sargent, boom. And I said, he said it twice. So this is scripted. And look at how acting he is. I'm gonna look at that again, okay? This is not a... First chapter is Samuel Robot He's an actor, this guy. I know actors. The Earth is flat. The idea of people have a flat Earth is just totally wrong. You know, they think they're total idiots and they live in their mom's basement and they... That's acted. He's an actor. Leave everything anyone tells them. It's quite the opposite. Now, look at the way he grabbed that drink. It's quite the opposite. He's doing a punchline here. This is not a documentary, Toronto Hot Docs. Shame on you. Watch. We test everything. We're... And he's setting up a failed test later on. They didn't test anything. It was the first time they tested. And then Jaron and Bob Nodell. And Bob Nodell goes, 
look, there's as many proofs as it is a globe as there is flat, so we're not sure yet. So he's, he's either, he's chickening out of the whole thing because he's on camera now. You know, he's like a big burly Jewish guy, I think, you know, uh, in a big mansion in Colorado who used to work on satellites. And again, he's going to use heavy reliance on cartoons to um, convey he used a satellite to prove a 50 degree angle. It's, 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 this is like everything my routine says they're going to do and my channel warned you they're going to do when Mark Sargent showed up and I told you about everything they would do three years ago, which is this. Now watch, what, watch the way he does it again. We're all either super successful or doing our own thing and I've met hundreds of flat earthers and none of them are living in their mom's basement, so. That was... Modern Family, that was Arrested Development, that was Curb Your Enthusiasm, that was bad acting. I want you to see that again. That is not a documentary subject character. It's not a real person. They're wrong. <laughs> they think they're total idiots and they live in their mom's basement and they believe everything anyone tells them. It's quite the opposite. We test everything. We're all either super successful or doing our own thing and I've met hundreds of flat earthers, and none of them are living in their mom's basement, so... So why did he say it twice? And look at the way... We have a crisis, uh, we have a combination of crisis actors who have not been announced as actors, or, or crisis actors. We have actors here that are mixing in with real people that have been duped, that they're real. This person is acting. We're going to look at this again. It's very important that the... The judge, the jury, the public, a lawyer that's willing to try this, looks at this again. Because this is the best they could get. But this is after several takes. Earthers is totally wrong. You know, they think they're total idiots and they live in their mom's basement and they believe everything anyone tells them. It's quite the opposite. We test everything. We're all either super successful or doing our own thing. And I've met hundreds of flat earthers and none of them are living in their mom's basement, so. Do you understand how that's, that's fake to set up the next shot? This is not a documentary film, okay? Now these people have been paid by somebody, okay? And they wanted me to, to cede my copyright and be used as some sort of laughing stock, side character to what these, to the characters they chose they would put on camera. It's very important. I want you to listen to that again. The dialogue makes no sense for realistic dialogue. So he needs to really say, live in their mother's basement. Why does he need to say that? He knows Mark Sargent. The idea people have of flat earthers is totally wrong. You know, they think they're total idiots and they live in their mom's basement and they believe everything anyone tells them. It's quite the opposite. We test everything. We're all either super successful or doing our own thing. And I've met hundreds of flat earthers, and none of them are living in their mom's basement, so. That is the most contrived, orchestrated, fake dialogue I've ever seen. Now, the connection between that guy and this guy, before the footage was recorded, is clear. Okay? So this is not a documentary film. This person misrepresented themselves and continues to misrepresent themselves. Uh, now with the assistance of major broadcast uh, networks like Amazon Prime and, and Netflix. What's next? The Oscar goes to or nominated for best documentary? This is not a documentary. You could, I mean, I, I can play that over and over again, but I'll let you play it here. There are millions of flat earthers. It's a fantastic community. Look what flat earth has inspired. And they're doing the modern family or uh, arrested development sort of filmmaking, close up, punchline. So it's, I was the first one staged. to take flat earth license plates. Then <laughs> slew them. Everybody started coming in. They started changing up the words. It's flat to flat earth. NASA lies, all that fun stuff. There's Arizona. Arkansas, okay, so this is not probably trying to rattle them off. There's always this dark, sinister, evil. People feel bad about it. 
this thing really makes people, gives people a lot of positive energy. So much enthusiasm there, in fact. About Flat Earth, Zen Garcia, from this. So what they're doing too is they're also like, the, uh, this guy Zen, he got a hold of me. I was like, this guy's trying to find out my next moves. So all the people that I suspected were like bad players or bad actors or fakes, they're pushing them as well. So, and I've got Zen Gar So it's like everything about this is mm, about steering the public away from looking at, hey, your globes are painted, photo or painting. Can you decide? If you say photo, you're wrong, it's my painting. So an expedition across Antarctica Thousands of civilians or a boat rush. No, they don't want to talk about that. Interesting. That was those were conditions for me to be in this film. Down to the earth. When I was first doing the flat earth stuff, Patricia comes on a podcast. She wasn't making flat earth videos. She wanted to interview flat earth <laughs> like the flat earth reporter. Hello and welcome to Flat Earth Another Hot Potato. Episode number 15. Episode number 68. Episode number 159. Mark, thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me. I could not be more excited about being on this show right now. We started talking on Skype. He does not look excited. He looks like he's doing a job. day in flat earth what had happened during that past week anything involving any sort of conspiracy and then i said so what happened is that i did matt powerland's top 10 flat earth videos of the week then she started doing this okay and one day why don't we just do a show and i jokingly <clears throat> called them the secret show sleep for everything Five minutes. Five of your. Oh, there he is. Hello. Hi. Are you ready to go? Ready to go, but keep looking. <laughs> Don't save the best stuff for the. I mean, save the best stuff for the show. Yeah, okay. Get your script right. Bye. Hello, and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is episode nine. You start with the mail, and I'll go in live chat and see if anybody... So we got a Harry Met Sally thing here. We're going to go through it. The VIP thing sold out. It's going on! On! Harry Irving, who plays for the Cavaliers, he recently said that he believes the world is flat. Okay, so did she use the footage, or did Jimmy Kimmel's production have a condition if you're going to use the footage? You know, you got to be like... you got to skew your documentary in favor of... Uh, making fun of the flat earth, right? Or did she pay for it? Because, you know, you've got to, you know, you got to get released for footage. She tried to get it from me. I said no. And this whole topic, including these people talking about it, is triggered, dates, timestamped by, by me. It's mentioned by me. And you'll see even these characters that are like, I, I know our actors. It's up to you to figure this out. Do some research, put it together, look at MGTV's videos. And I'll be providing a lot of information as well. And if you got any more proof, timelines, that they don't work out, and I'm going to talk about timelines um, with what they're saying right now, these two characters on social media, and how they don't work out with this production. Like they're saying they're victims of this film. They didn't know they were being roped into this. Well, then why'd you buy plane tickets to go to every screening at every festival? Out of your own money? To, be, to watch yourself get humiliated over and over again? Now you're, and then you pushed it after you saw the film, but now you're saying you didn't know? That doesn't work either. So we're going we're gonna to show that as well. Is that a subject that you covered with him? Are you, are you aware of that? I wouldn't even know how to broach that topic. <laughs> hey, AJ, do you want to talk about how you think the Earth is flat? flat? I do not think the world is flat. I'm just saying there's some stuff about it. Like how do people actually believe the Earth is flat? I'm stumped, Kelly. I don't know how people believe that. Round Earth or flat Earth? <laughs> yeah. Round Earth. <laughs> You just threw a divide between what us. What is okay. happening? Actually, no. Shaq goes the other way. Not debatable. It's flat. Kyrie. So these guys are like getting a salary to be on TV to talk about this. That's, again, the amount of money that's been injected into the world economy. Flat. Draymond. Flat. What is going on in the world? I 
often like to say that if you gave me Q the doctor, we're just talking about how come uh, Antarctica is off limits, I could see things at a distance, and you still don't have any real video, full Earth globe from a satellite camera just doing one spin on its axis, just one day rotation, right? Because there is none. That's composite photos tricking you that it's a real time lapse sped up in six seconds. The Galileo has been proven to be a fraud. So then this guy, these are the, that's the facts. But now it's like, okay, they're not stable because they brought those things up, okay? No one's seen a globe from space except the, the people we must believe, astronauts. So it's like priests. Five or ten minutes with you, I can probably tease out some belief you have that your friends would think that that's a little bit strange. Globe? Right. So you've never seen a globe. We tend to form the beliefs based on a couple things. One is our intuitions, just what feels right. Another is our subjective experience. Do we? For most of us who look out on the horizon, indeed, it looks flat. That seems like... Well, it's not about that. It's about trigonometry of 26,000 miles circumference. You know, that ground's got to turn into an obstructing hill, like, you know, Mark Sargent uh, paraphrased my work. Um, and if something's not obstructed with the amount of trigonometry that's supposed to happen for, you know, the ground around up to being a 26,000 mile circumference ball, then your trigonometry is not correct or you're lying about the model and shape of the ground. It's a reasonable thing. And so you <laughs> ask, okay, well, why are we saying this is Earth's round? If you don't have someone who's going to give you a satisfying answer, you might well then try to find alternatives. It's what you can observe. You don't need complicated math formulas to figure out. Well, you do. It's, you just need trigonometry. So, I mean, they might show the curvature rate from the point of view, the vantage point of view of a, of a human looking at the horizon. We'll see. They live. <clears throat> the powers that should not be have told us so. And trust us. Believe us. Now, she dated a guy who's going on record saying that this used to be a man I don't know if he's joking or smearing, but Antonia Subarat says that she came out to London. The relationship did not work out. She was trying to rope him into a reality series as an artist who said the earth was flat with blonde hair. Does that remind you of somebody? And he didn't want anything to do with it. And he, he claims that this, this person went through gender reassignment and used to be a man. And <clears throat> we have. I did. We all did. Something that you see a lot in science is imposter syndrome, which is a phenomenon where the more you know about a topic, the more you feel Pierce your like nose. you aren't actually an expert. You feel like you can't possibly be an authority on this. On the flip side, there is something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a psychological uh, finding that people who don't have uh, knowledge or expertise about something tend to have a false confidence that they are in fact very knowledgeable about something. It becomes this tendency to assume that you have all the facts, that what you know is everything that there is to know. If you get online, you'll see pages and pages of so-called evidence that <laughs> seems scientific, right? Here's an equation, <clears throat> here's a diagram, and you go, huh, you know, maybe they're onto something there. And I feel like that's just as good as an opinion of a physicist or a consensus of, you know, 20 physicists. We've all been brainwashed by scientism, by those <laughs> of a new religion. Science is just a search for truth, right? Science is a way of thinking, starting at, I don't know. You know, I like this guy. This guy here, you know, and he seems lucid, you know? Chipping away at the I don't know <clears throat> through evidence with no motive on where it takes you. And you now you see the way I'm talking, you see the way he's talking. Watch how they just take certain select clips um, in some of my presentations, which are very stylistic. They're very entertaining. They're, that's why they're in the category entertainment, okay? For legal reasons. Up with a new idea, mm -hmm. and the first thing that's going to happen is 10 people are going to try to figure out. So this is an animation they got from somebody else. This is animation they custom made for the narrative they chose to take on of, m of me, my concept, with these people I warned the producer, I, I, I believe, are actors that have been inserted into YouTube to basically 
uh, plagiarize my work so that they can create a film that will smear everything I, um, I propose in a monologue that triggered the world to look into the globe. That's, so they got animation here. Why it's wrong. Okay, it's called institutional disconfirmation. So when you have conviction, it's really well earned. So to have a vendetta against that uh, is a little odd. Science should have wiped us out literally in the first month. And it's the exact opposite. We're not just winning. We're crushing them because mm -hmm. they don't know how to address it. Because they're not convinced they can knock it out, they don't want to get into the ring. We've got questions out there which they can't answer. How much time do you Like photo or painting. And when they do answer, they get tricked into saying photo, but they've never, they don't have any reference. They haven't been up in space to see the globe. So if they see an image of it, they wouldn't know. They have no reference. That's been the biggest psych psycho break, psychotic break every human being confronted with me has had. And they didn't want it on camera, you know, clearly. I have to spend mm -hmm. on every theory that is out there, right? And many times. I'm and that's why you put out a monologue and nobody could debunk it live or heckle it. Um, so you can get like hundreds of millions of people going out and verifying these statements, which they have. So you can end up taking apart 500 years of repeated scientific scientism. Um, you can analytically, hyper-realistically take it apart if you've, if you've got like hundreds of millions of people uh, researching, doing experiments, looking at all the images, and that's what I did. Things that we are debating are not even theories, uh, either because they're not falsifiable uh, or sometimes they've already... Like the theory of gravity, and then you skip the fact phase, you go to the laws, and the law is something imposed. And falsified. <clears throat> Absolutely ludicrous with their teaching. Can't feel any of the movement. And they think, well, they, we go faster than a bullet for space. I say take physics. I mean, that's, that's fundamental. I mean, if you're driving in a car and I throw a ball up, and you, where's the ball going to come down? It's going to come down because the Earth is not spinning. You need gravity to explain why it feels like the Earth is not spinning. You introduce gravity because we don't feel spinning. And if we don't feel spinning, or if you have alleged gravity holding everything to a spinning Earth, then the ball will come down directly. But even without gravity, the ball will come down directly. So he's about to say that, how come the ball's not flying that way? Like it would be if the Earth was spinning and there was no gravity? Because if the Earth is flat, it wouldn't go that way. So he's not making sense. And this is why he's still stuck teaching high school. It's not going to come down in my hand. Okay, it's not going to fly through the back windshield of my car. So are there any scientists that are in flat Earth? No. And they can't be. Once you get to a certain level of education, the education system more or less owns you. You're not allowed to do certain things. I mean, think of a teacher. Teachers have to get master's yeah. degrees. Yeah. So they think of an, a, a normal educator. There's a great uh, uh, email correspondence I had with the um, there's doctors that are flat. They're scientists, I guess. Um, uh, there's even people that work at NASA right now on the Mars project that are flat. And they're just taking money. And they're emailing me. Like, engineers. <laughs> it's like, I, I got one right now. I should show you. It's too funny. I mean, like, I'm going to show you real quickly. I try to get legal advice from this guy because he's like a whiz. Um, and I was like, you fucking traitor. But then I thought to myself, hey, if they wanted to hire me to fake landing on Mars, humans landing on Mars, I'm probably the only guy that's like qualified to do it. Nobody would believe I did it because everybody thinks I'm a flat earther. I'd, I'd probably do it just to see how stupid everybody is. I would do it. You know what I mean? So let's see. Let's see where that email is. Let me find it for you. I'll find it while this plays. How's that? I'll continue this and we'll get back to it. So there are, there are, and there was a professor at the University of Tasmania that one of the pupils challenged um, seeing sight targets at a distance that would defy the trigonometry to uh, calculate a curving ground that would make a 26,000 mile circumference. He went on a field trip to a certain point and he basically uh, lost his marbles in front of his students. He lost face because 
the thing he said you wouldn't see, he saw. If they came out and said that, no matter where they were. Have you had any educators come out? No. Oh. That's not true. <clears throat> Are there any um, established professors like from MIT? That guy there is with the imposter who said he was Matt Parlin on CBS. He's also the guy who's going to then claim they sent up something like a satellite, because he used to build satellites, he claims. But then he's going to claim in this film that they sent up a satellite to see if there was a 15 degree declination on the Earth. Like, we'll look at that. But it was all cartoons of his claim. It's like, this man here, I've even engaged on Facebook. Um, saying, you know, why are you walking around with a gentleman's coat, you know, playing, you know, pretending that you're you're the man with all these little boys? There was just no response. This is another bad actor, very very weird actor. Um, and then I said, hey, I've got this huge space here. Why don't you guys use it? So I've made many offerings to <clears throat> these people to see if they're they're sincere. No. They just keep me on Facebook to make it look like they're friends with me. It adds credibility. So um, I don't know who's who. My Facebook is down now anyways. So I'll just keep watching these, these guys because you're going to see that. How they don't even give this guy's name. That guy's name. They won't even give his name. There are. And I imagine that he had to sign an interviewee release form. And I don't think he signed it. Uh, flat earther or infinite plane society so and if he didn't sign it <clears throat> and he doesn't have any problem with being in this film and he's the only one they don't write his name you know very suspicious so your professor I mean if you come out with something like that you can get drunk right out of your business so I mean obviously there's a very real risk to their livelihood I work for Denver International Airport as a consultant I work for several of the city governments I'm a forensic consultant for the Denver Police Department um, I do the town of Lyman okay so I didn't hear this the first time because I was so furious with the other things so this is the third time I watched this thing So he's working with uh, law enforcement. This guy was on the uh, internet making sure that uh, any kind of smear uh, or um, information being released by the anonymous group about Scientology um, would be uh, countered with um, you know, discrediting videos that uh, malign anonymous and promote Scientology. Um, so he, is he a Scientologist that just one defend his uh, his creed? Was he paid by Scientology? Or he's just a guy that's like, you know what? I'm gonna like, I'm gonna weigh in on this uh, debate with uh, the public and anonymous uh, attacking Scientology because I don't think it's fair. Like, who would care to defend a religion they're not a part of, unless they're a paid uh, cyber agent to troll or paid troll, troll for hire? Because he definitely trolled me, and he then pretended to be me and frauded my company. And this character here who if I'm not mistaken, just said he, his, his list of credits, he works with police? Professor, I mean, if you come out with something like that, you can get drunk right out of your business. So, I mean, obviously there's a very real risk to their livelihood. I work for Denver International Airport as a consultant. He works at Denver International Airport. I work for several of the city governments. Several governments? In Colorado, Denver, city governments. I'm a forensic consultant for the Denver Police Department. He's a forensic consultant for the uh, Denver Police Department. The actor next to him, who you'll see is going by the name Flat Earther, Infinite Plane Society, um, uh, has 10 years working in a morgue. And before that, I believe in Afghanistan, picking up human remains on, on battle, uh, battlefields. I do the town of Lyman's entire IT. There are physics students out there, there's astrophysics students, and they're all arriving at these same conclusions. How is it that they could possibly all be wrong? And my response to that was that they are putting things in a perspective that they've been taught. Nobody wants to admit that they've been fooled, but the re 
reality is it's happened to every one of us. Confirmation bias is one of the most solid empirical findings in psychology. If I have a belief or an attitude, I will search for instances that confirm what I believe. So that's basically the recipe of this documentary, this fake documentary. It's not a documentary. And also, I find myself in a company with a lot of other people who think the same way as I do. Of course we always listen. I'm not in their company because these people um, have been promoted by Google and YouTube specifically to uh, pretend and then uh, be a part of a project that would smear them and the topic, which is this film. Uh, he always just has a really good collection of uh, people think that, you know, defining gravity by taking a microphone and dropping it on the ground and saying, there's gravity. It's like, yeah, that's gravity, bitches. I mean, <laughs> it's laughable. Appreciate it very much again. You're welcome. You did an awesome job. It gives me a little bit of uh, practice, you know, for what I'm going to be doing in Raleigh. Are you going to that by any chance? Are you going to the conference in Raleigh? Ah, bummer. Letter is positive. So I don't know if he's, what's he doing here? Is he signing something? He's on the phone. This is person frauded me. Positive. When flat earthers get together, it doesn't matter their background or whatever. They just, it's like you connect on such a deep level. Infinite plane. How does that work? So that's, there's no name here for this gentleman. So again, this person's like hiding out within this subculture. Um, and then a week before he goes on CBS and says, he's my company, my brand, my website, my name, and CBS does no fact checking, he's still incognito in this documentary. As far as the dome slash Jill. Yeah, uh, Mark Starkin asked about that. I'm not gonna assume that the dome until somebody can show me the curvature of the sky. Until I find out otherwise, I'm just gonna say infinite. A lot of infighting becomes something of, um, a lot of faction. We can't have agendas diverting us from the fact that. So the, it's a classic technique that if somebody's going to co-opt the revolution, it's like you're either with us or against us. But the people that are saying us are the infiltrators. So then they make you look like you're divisive. Um, but it's like I don't. I didn't want to. If you're the real McCoy, you don't want to unify with fakes. You don't want to unify with people who came in after you that are now twisting what you're saying. Uh, to, to fulfill a narrative that you're insane, you're crazy, or you're pranking the world, or you're just a comedian, or you're off your rocker, or whatever you think these people are going to lend themselves towards, especially that narrative, you know, like a real person's on guard with unifying or allying with these people. I don't know these people. And each one of them did something unethical. He lied to me about, um, you know, talking to me with an agenda to pretend to be me on CBS. That's a lie. Um, there's, these people have misrepresented themselves in close contact with me on the record via email with their actions publicly over and over again, including the producers of this film. And I told the producer of this film, I don't know who's in your film, so I'm going to have these conditions because so and so and so, this guy frauded me on CBS. This guy, da da da, and turns out they're all in the film. So I was right to have those conditions. And I was right to be paranoid because the film did exactly what triggered me to concern myself uh, with concerning these people. This is not a real documentary. We don't know if the world is, in fact, a ball or it's flat. As you're looking at the model, you're looking at all the different possibilities and making it come together and work. When it becomes about fighting, oh, you're lying about this, or that's not true, to me that's not productive. Okay, so... If somebody's going to fake in order to take down what you're saying, I that person's going to say, let's all unify with me. Obviously. Um, and if I'm the one who started it, and I don't want to unify with them, you should probably heed my warning. And that's what I said since 2015. These people are uh, fodder for an event, and then there's going to be a film crew that's going to film the event. And we're going to get to the event that was put on by Metatron, which is the crux and crescendo of this film. It centers around leading up to that, which is a conference. Flat Earth has camps. <clears throat> it is not unified by any degree. 
70% of them believe... So more animation, indicating there was like cell animation production, which takes time. You know, you have to have to hire them, you have to book it. You can't just get all your footage and it's like, okay, one week of all this animation, we are not a star line, okay, boom, Hot Docs documentary Toronto. You know, you edited an entire film in like a month and a week and did the cell animation to boot after you collected your footage and then got it into the Toronto Hot Docs festival? Because you were negotiating with me up until like October, November that this is covered by some sort of dome. The other 30% believe that it's not covered and there's just more versions of this outside. I use Life of Brian as the, uh, one of the metaphors for how Flat Earth fragmented when it first came out. When he was running away from him and he dropped his shoe. This is footage. So, when I said I have to be on camera 25% of the film, if they already chose to have him 40% of the film, they'd be, that would leave no room for their narrative. They basically chose him, chose him describing this, and then spent money to get the rights to air footage from the film Life of Brian. So a narrative was set up for me to be second fiddle or some marginal crazy. I did invite... I sent out the conditions to see at what point this was a contrived film and not a documentary. And here they are paying for this, but saying, we can't pay you your per diem, which would have been my legal retainer in case they violated my conditions. I asked for money to be there in my studio, especially when they're going to be making millions off these fakes and using my likeness without my consent now and violating copyright. Wow. <laughs> Instantly, within I think less than 90 I mean, seconds. I've never seen a documentary film with a character that's promoting so many films and then showing the clips of these Hollywood movies. This is like a parade of Hollywood productions and companies um, trying to thwart off, you know, the uh, the spread of flat Earth on behalf of science and the establishment. A series mm -hmm. of relig religions mm -hmm. formed around the dropping of the shoe. Let us like him. You know, unless, again, the life of Brian owners, uh, John Cleason that says, sure, you could use it as long as you're not trying to say the earth is flat now. And that was a condition that would conflict with, you know, the originator of this entire topic, which would mean this is a propaganda hit piece. Yeah, I, can you sort out the, the argument here if you're, if you're any, any kind of expertise in legalese, in copyright? Like, there's a conspiracy going on here to violate an artist's work and smear him while they make a profit. This is a very virulent form of copyright infringement, and it's going to be very hard for judges and lawyers and, and the public to really wrap their head around it. But I predicted it. How did I predict it? And I have a witness, an actual documentary producer, Diane English from Scenario Productions, who I told back in 2015 that this is how they would try to stop, stop my expedition film. It's fucking pathetic. Nobody listened to me. These people said I was paranoid while they do exactly what I was warning the public about. She's upset, but here's the deal, Nicole. Nicole Cote. She didn't sign an interview release and she was never approached. You're on a commons platform. You're on YouTube, it's a commons platform. Exhibit, um, we're gonna say exhibit uh, B after the correspondence. No, barely any commons indication here. You're in a confinement model like the globe. Take the shoes and follow him! Yeah, there's competition everywhere. Because of that competition, you mix that with a little bit of conspiracy, a little bit of paranoia, people go off the freaking deep end. Matt is one of the, if not the oldest veterans of the Flat Earth community. And so when he throws a temper tantrum, everybody hears it. This is what they're doing. There, there, there's a mutiny going on. Okay, so that 
the decor, the studio, the footage, the camera I purchased that shot me, and your paper trail of trying to get me to see copyright to an interviewee release. Very clever and be a part of a film with a bunch of people I told you um, I need to find their addresses and their names so I can serve them. Okay? So these are my conditions. You didn't abide by them and then you go and sell my painting. <clears throat> Barely an indication of commons here. Right here is the painting. Carolyn Clark and her uh, set decor, set design team didn't paint the painting. Carolyn Clark and her camera crew didn't film me in front of the painting. I didn't agree to that, and I certainly didn't agree with you reproducing it for $4.99 a pop on Amazon and Netflix, or charging ticket sales at the Hot Dogs Festival. So this is, okay, the main uh, uh, reason of copyright infringement. Definitely the whole crux of this fair use presentation. So the fact that you're here is like raising a red flag. Who am I? My name is Matt Darwin. So here's the admission. There's no commons. It's the same painting right here, as you can see. Right? This arm is that arm there. You follow? This person is me, the person they tried to have seed copyright of his likeness and his work, okay? And his image and his mouth and whatever ideas he would convey on camera through an interview release form I did not sign. And there's no comments. And here's the admission that I'm the originator of the entire topic of this film. And they have on record an email saying they decline paying me the per diem and my conditions, but we have them to be determined, uh, somehow accessing footage from major Hollywood production films, either by acquiescing to a condition by the production company that has ownership of those films, Truman Show, Life of Brian, etc., or paying for that footage indicating a narrative. And therefore, this is not a documentary film. This is a propaganda project, which is in violation of the copyright of this work, this original work of art called Hands. So let this be um, exhibit uh, three or C. <clears throat> I'm the reason why Edward Snowden spoke up. So it's a very interesting comment out of context from the character I'm portraying on the channel that was, that was uh, uh, created off a of comedy routine and the channel is itself a marketing uh, vehicle for a massive event uh, being filmed crossing Antarctica with thousands of civilians. That's, that's all I'm doing here. I don't know why they made a film like this about me this way, without my consent, I don't know why, but it's been made the way I warned everybody three years ago they would do with this character. Things started taking off after, after the clues were put out. People were calling... So he's looking down. So things really started taking off after the clues went out. Not, not that things were taking off because of myself and another channel called My Perspective by Rory Cooper, which I don't know if it's still up. And another guy, Cesar, out of Germany, which cited the planes hovering through the north. I believe that's probably the guy he's talking about. So as he's, you can see right here, he's not too confident in owning that it started taking off. And then they got cell animation of his words. Um, he's not very confident when he states that it started taking off after him. He doesn't really own it. Things started taking off after, after the clues were put out. So let's look at that again. You tell me if he, if he really believes that. Things started taking off after, after the clues were put out. People were calling me no. asking to interview him because I was one of the only people that knew Matt's phone number. And he's doing the whole thing. The point of the matter is, is that he did what I said he would do 
And when I said that, it was 2015, like January 2015, according to Diana English, she's going to be a witness. Because I phoned her right after I talked to him on the, on the phone, and I filmed that recording in the, uh, uh, the documentary This Crazy Notion. I called Diana English immediately after. Not on camera in the film This Crazy Notion, but the footage of me calling Mark Sargent. That's in This Crazy Notion. In real time, in real life, when I filmed that, immediately after that, I called the documentary producer, Diane English, that I was working with, and told her, this guy um, sounds like somebody created a character out of Hollywood to pretend to be a YouTuber or a regular civilian so they could have reason to hijack this. Aloof artist thing. It's like, oh, no, no, I don't give in. What do you think the follow-up? So that's not true. I did give interviews. So here we got a, this actor who I don't know. I even drove from Tampa to Boulder, Colorado, and I have the email correspondence when I arrived in Boulder to meet him because he claimed to be in Boulder, and he didn't answer his phone, and he didn't email me back. Um, I, I never met him, and I went out to meet him to see if he was real. Here he is saying, I don't do interviews, talking on my behalf. Question mark. Well, how about you? Do you want to talk about Flores? Sure, why not? Here's my spiel. Matt lost it. He went atomic. He did a series of videos and called into another podcast and was streaming live. Called everybody out. He's convinced that I work for the government. That you, sitting here now, apparently this is a government safe house. Now, government or a contrived production with the agenda to co-opt the narrative of an expedition film um, that's being triggered by a comedy routine. Um, you decide. I mean, you could look at the acting there. Everybody out is convinced that I work for the government. That you, sitting here now, apparently this is a government safe house and I am on the payroll. It doesn't seem like he's really convinced that he's passing that, that one on to the public. Matt wanted to be the king of flat earth, but he wanted to do it on his terms. I started this. I'm the tension that caused the flat earth. That's how the flat earth started. Which is not what so then you've got my wife in the background, and, you know, just taking extracts of, like, I do every emotion with this, this character on my channel in the category entertainment, right? And I denied you my participation in your work because, you know, this kind of, these kind of antics. I don't know you, Carolyn Clark. Um, so these extracts, right, out of context, with artwork, my likeness, when I said no, because I knew they were going to be doing this with this guy. And to this day, they call it paranoia. It's like, you can't call it paranoia when, when everything you accused me of being paranoid thinking, you did. We, we must roll back the reins from all this. It can no longer be called paranoia when your project and everybody in it is doing exactly what I said they would participate in to dismiss me, the routine, and this trigger to cause a huge world peace expedition of thousands of civilians crossing Antarctica to measure if it's a globe and we're all on one ball or it's a flat plane. So this is ruining that project and they're lying right now that I'm paranoid. My paranoia was based off you being part of a, pro a project that would uh, make me look crazy and then smear me out of context that would violate my copyright and you're a plagiarist and you all along were going to participate in a project like this. So now, to still say that, when, it, when everything I, I was concerned about has come to pass, is now slander. It's not paranoia. You did it. It's defamation. That's a separate case. Happened. Here you just kept growing bigger and bigger and bigger, and he just, his voice just became lost in the wind. To where all of a sudden we started, you know, the conference was announced down in North Carolina and he was invited. Okay, so these people invited me to a conference 
with my talking points from a comedy routine. Um, I wrote back, you'd have to cover accommodations and my flight out. They said they would not. Then I found out they were selling the tickets for $200 and were sold out. So he's lying again. And he <clears throat> said, no, I, I'm not going to do the comment. You know, why should I be in a room with you guys? You're nothing without me. That, that whole stuff. So he, this is defamation, character assassination, and slander. Now he could say, well, I was... But you're in the project that... You now are still stating, I'm paranoid that you would be in, but you are in it, and you're doing exactly what I said you would to, to a producer in uh, January 2015 called Diane English. So you're doing it. Um, it's not paranoia. You did do it. And I'm on record. Uh, on, I'm on video saying that. I have people warning them that, that this is where you're going with this project and that they would try to get me to seed copyright with some sort of contract. I never did. This production went forward and then still used my images, and then they made a complete violation. It's no longer any indication of a public commons platform. They're going to try to change this at the last minute. Damage has been done. You violated copyright. Okay? And that was just annoying. So now it's getting more serious. Mark Sargent is uh, what I always thought. He's been sent in in kind of an intelligent fashion working with Hollywood. Mark Sargent's not Mark Sargent. It's Warner Brothers, you idiot. And I told you, Warner Brothers has a deal with the Pentagon and the CIA. That complete terror. I don't know if it's working because, you know, like, there's a lot of players that, that would be threatened by a comedian where in which the monologue he presented, photo or painting with NASA imagery, the public has no clue whether it's a photo and turns out to be all CGI. I think the Pentagon, intelligence agencies, academia, Hollywood, um, scientists, I think everybody would be on alert that the model of reality is, um, is now a target. Right? And it is. Bye. It's been a congressional hearing where they have to, they've, Congress has forced YouTube to put disclaimers on flat earth content on YouTube. So how outlandish would it be to say that, you know, a Hollywood company is working with human intelligence at the Pentagon to make sure they control the flat earth narrative so it doesn't spill over into the coast of Antarctica with millions of civilians trying to cross to prove and measure it. Or he would have revenge with the Whatever, dude, you're still not coming to the conference. You're just thrashing. Just try to tear everybody down if you can. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal, but it causes ripples with the ground troops. We're trying to look for stability to get to the point where it's accepted. We're trying to get the stability where it gets accepted that you're in an ice wall, Truman style, glass dome, but never any application of the scientific method where for human beings to prove the Earth is um, a curving sphere is uh, just a north-south expedition across Antarctica. Or two teams doing the 59.9 southern and northern latitudes, leaving from the same longitude, and both teams, whatever the craft, waterborne or on land, is moving at the same speed. They would hit each longitude on a sphere at the same time, you know, with a debit of storm and rerouting of about three days, four days. If it's always laid in the southern hemisphere, then it's a hemiplane. It's like if they're always four weeks later at hitting that longitude in the south, then the northern team's always like, when are they going to get here? And they're waiting for two weeks, three weeks, and it's always the same. Well, then it widens out like the flat earth model, and that's why planes hub in the north. Well, then the mathematics of longitudes and latitudes um, don't add up to the earth being a sphere. Just by doing that, without a crossing of Antarctica. So there's two ways to skin this uh, rat or cat, depending on which way you look at your glass that's controlled. So here they got, um, when asked to appear in the film, Matt stipulated that he, that he received $5,000, 12% of profits. 
No, so all the profits on my monologue and a topic I triggered through a comedy routine just go to you, Carolyn Clark. They don't go towards any kind of research or me who wrote this. They just go to you and your fancy car and your next Hollywood production. Is that right? And then you get to reproduce the painting that I painted by hand and sell it on Netflix and on Amazon with the help of Jeff Bezos, who also has a conflict of interest because Amazon owns Blue Origin, which is an uh, aerospace company. So let's look at some more of this. And this could have been negotiated. I just wanted to see at what point these people were going to you know, do a smear video and have me see copyright. So if they stuck on this like I was some money-hungry control freak, creative control. Well, it's my monologue. That's, that triggered the entire topic. You even admitted that I'm the originator. And we also have a, a correspondence. There's just a total outright declination of any of these conditions and no, nothing to negotiate, which proved to me that you had a narrative already set up, Mrs. Clark. So 12% of profits, creative control, a guarantee that he'd be featured in 25. That's to find out if you had Mark Sargent as your central character, like I said Mark Sargent was sent into YouTube to do, to be the spokesman for my work. So they wouldn't be a direct um, copyright violation of the flat earth and this monologue. You'd have this guy who showed up mirroring the idea. Um, and that we support his unverified claim that Mark Sargent is secretly a Warner Brothers executive using an alias. His partner who owns the label, Mark Sargent, is on record, Your Honor, saying that he used to work for the new media division of Warner Brothers and owns the company Metatron, which basically owns the label Mark Sargent. So this here is not very good documentary investigation, investigative research. This is propaganda. It's not unverified. They did no research. I sent her the proof. So now we're going to go into, this is slander. Plus, she's disclosing a private email, you know, or contents of a, of a thing and slanting it. Exactly why I sent out conditions like this, to find out who do you have as your character. <laughs> MGTV has that, if you go searching on MGTV. You cannot believe a flat earther theory without believing in some giant conspiracy. Because you have to have some reason why all this... So she's uh, an astrophysicist. So they based off the supposition that the Earth is a ball or the photos are photos than when they're actually painting. So she's got a career based off a painting I painted. It's wrong. And other artists painted for NASA. And if it's wrong, that it had to have been fake. And if it was fake, well... There you go, there's your conspiracy. And what I always am most curious about is why would someone bother to fake all this? Well, if, you know, land is opened up or claimed to be opened up by Columbus, which was part of one of my conditions, um, and he was Italian, but the Italian royal family wouldn't give him a budget to have six ships go for a, you know, a Northwest Passage or you know, a new way to China if the Earth was indeed a ball. Um, and he had to go to Britain and then to Spain and then finally I believe Portugal gave him the money and the ships and then he goes across the choppy waters of the Atlantic and then discovers you know, Cuba and then America is, is not a really good reflection on the collective intelligence or historical intelligence of China and Russia for the proximity of the geography of the coast of Russia or Siberia and Alaska, which is a Russian word, uh, Russia's on record selling Alaska to America. So when did the Russians get here? So the narrative of history doesn't work out. You got 55 miles between the coast of Siberia and the coast of Alaska, dotted by two islands, the Diomede Islands. You're saying that nobody from Russia or China didn't take a canoe across that? or didn't walk across most of the ice in the winter and then take a boat to the rest of it and discover all this when, you know, historically Alaska belonged to Russia. There's a disconnect with the dots that our very history presents us. And yeah, a guy from uh, Italy uh, went across the choppy waters of the Atlantic to discover America. 
But nobody took a boat across the uh, Bering Straits. It was a topic point I wanted if I was going to be in this film. We didn't put that one up. When it comes to science, mm -hmm. think of it this way. If you have 450 years of them showing you it's a globe, how much is that worth to them to keep it? It's worth so everything. that's Denmark. that's di a direct line from the routine. So that there is, he's taken a punchline from the comedy routine. Now, I have exhibit for that. Let that be exhibit four or D um, of a um, of copyright violation of a comedy routine. Who was behind the whole thing? I mean, that's the... I know. <clears throat> I really do. When I was in space, I got paid extra. Five dollars a day. That's how rich I got. Well, I think of all of these conspiracies or belief systems as... Yeah, but it's your talking tours now, Scott Kelly, and the fact that you probably got paid to be in this film, but I didn't, and this is all from a monologue. I wrote, I created, nobody ever paid me for, except just for laughs, but I did that uh, by surprise on a reality uh, taping, live taping of the Just for Laughs French division, just Pourrir. So it's been copyrighted on that. You know, that's where it started. Spider's web. And from what I can see, the flat earth is the center of it all. If you can start getting a conspiracy theory into someone's head, it's amazing how suddenly everything seems this way. They, the powers of... So now it's the... Are doing whatever they can. You know, the delusional it's mind of a conspiracy theorist, right? So... GMO foods with Chemtrails. The transgender push in the media that they're trying to turn all the guys into girls and girls into guys. Even the fear, the fear that there will be hijackers taking a plane and putting it through a building. Oh, by the way, I don't believe there were planes through buildings. They seem to have to tell us and disclose to us what they're doing through media. So, you know, they put their channels, they don't put my channel. Very interesting here. So, you don't know that my channel is the NASA channel. Did you know that? They wouldn't dare put that up because th that was probably one of the conditions that everybody who gave them footage, Scott Kelly and everybody else, that you can't put his YouTube channel. Movies, TV shows, who do you think are the real controllers? I don't think there's anybody who knows who's at the top of the control grid. Some people point the finger at the Jews. Some say the Masons. The Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. Jesuits and Satan. The Vatican. Yeah, ultimately, the Vatican. There's bad people in all of those groups, and <laughs> probably pretty normal people in all of those groups. Although I don't know if there's good Satanists. Anybody who you can see or you know their name, they're merely a front. For You're never going to know who the real controllers actually are. Oftentimes, it actually starts with conventional wisdom isn't to be trusted, governments aren't to be trusted, scientists aren't to be trusted. And when, when you start with that premise, then you can get into all sorts of corners. And I think what's really scary is what they're actually doing isn't just hiding the flat earth. It's the fact that they're still doing human sacrifice and blood rituals. What sources do you trust? Myself. That's it. He's <laughs> narcissist. Uh, he's jokingly said that if there's a, an event like a use Boston bombing again. I'm not going to believe any of those events are real unless myself, I get my leg blown off. For many people, no matter what evidence you throw at them, they can come up with this more complicated and in, I think, most of our eyes, less believable uh, hypothesis. I get amateur astronomers will say, I can see the moons of Jupiter. Go to a planetarium. Does, does Jupiter look like a, like a sphere to you? Who's to say that when you walk out of that one, First off, you don't see that texture when you look through uh, a mechanical telescope, only through like digital telescopes that have through GPS, and then there's like a delay. Well, an image could be fed onto your computer screen when you hook up your telescope now to your computer screen, so you can get a screen that screens the image of Jupiter. It's not that much bigger than it. Above the clouds, it is a display system. There's this huge mound of evidence that most of us come to accept that really requires that you go to. That's the the evidence, when you look at it pound for pound at the end of the day, that's what the comedy routine's about, is 90% of your 
evidence is visual proof. The visual proof is flat imagery. The imagery is CGI, artist rendering, composite, and it's not a one snap photograph seared on film by light exposure by either video, film, or camera. Uh, or camera, right? Okay, so. Through one after another and say, nope, I don't believe that, I don't believe that. Here's a countervailing theory. It just can spiral on itself and have this sort of snowball effect. The funny thing is, is that I'm a conspiracy realist, but there's conspiracies about me. I look at episode 54 of Patricia's Theater. These people I hired by section heads and supervisors in supervisor roles at NASA, the NSA, the FBI, CIA. These aren't regular people. It started off with me being called a shill, uh, as if I'm doing this for money. And then I was called a flat earth honeypot bring men into flat earth and then steer them the wrong way because my last name is steer uh, so what patricia does is she still no the man that i'm interviewing dated her and said that she she was trying to rope him into a reality series uh, as a flat earth artist his name is antonio suvarez and he also later on uh, revealed that he felt very embarrassed because um He's 99% sure that that used to be a man, and she went through gender reassignment, or it, he went through gender reassignment. Really? All these guys. But that's a part of the lure of narcissistic, psychopathic women. I never thought that the name Patricia, which is my first, first name, would be spun into the fact that the last three letters are CIA in the word Patricia, which means... I didn't, I didn't see that one. Because the government would be that dumb. But okay, if you want to believe it. Uh, are there things that have been... Started? I mean, I feel really bad for her if she's real. The problem is that she, she's a very good one if she's a sociopath. And there's a lot of indications that she is. And sociopaths, like, they're difficult to detect because they pretend to be like you and I. So there's going to be some um, another exhibit with her character um, where I kind of expose that she's a liar. You're going to see that uh, after this film. I'm a reptilian, and people see my eyes shape shift while I'm on YouTube. That I drink blood. The most recent one is that I'm transgender. Okay, so she's talking. This I mean, is the guy I who dated you. I even threw up a question one day, what's up with Patricia Spear, you know? Because I don't know, but um, I don't know. Now, the thing about all of these things is I can't prove any of it wrong. But she's I not a transgender. I've shown people my birth certificate, my driver's license, photos of myself as a child, and they'll say, well, if you're CIA, all of that stuff can be constructed. <clears throat> People will still say you don't have a real family, that you don't have a brother and sister. Um, there's nothing that I can do. So, anybody can believe whatever they want to believe about me. So then she's stuck I in what she's claiming, you know, with herself. No, they're lying. Or are they so conspiratorial? Type flat earth into YouTube at the beginning of 2015, you came up with 50,000 hits, roughly, right? No, that's not true. Search results. Okay. You type it in this morning, I think it was at 19.3 or 19.4, I hadn't checked it since I got here. 19.4 million. It feels like it's part of something bigger. So this, I'm going to skip this. This is just a guy who's just, you know, Here it is. great my, artist. Uh, got, you know, roped into this. Good for him. Making wooden Home bikes. Nice guy. But I don't know. I really don't think <laughs> that this guy's... I don't know how it happened. This guy's a real... They're going to mix with real people here. Channel called Globusters. Uh, Channel 5. Channel 5. Channel 5. Channel 5. Channel 5. Really, the goal was, now, this guy here's was I wanted going to, to do one uh, erroneous well, experiment after another. And then I was like, Bob, you want to do like a weekly show? This is where I broadcast the Globuster show from. We do our show once a week, every Sunday. 
We are a We're out of money there from law enforcement for that. Scientists. We have done several experiments that show the Earth is flat. I mean, I think that the scientific method is the best way to get to the truth. And I just want to feel comfortable in things that I believe. The difference between being skeptical about something and being in denial is very subtle but very important, right? Someone who is skeptical is willing to test their own hypothesis. Their own expedition film. They're actually looking so for this truth. whole film is about Even shutting down that they what I've, I've, I intended to do with this comedy routine. An expedition film. A flat earthers, globalists, all different teams racing across Antarctica. This film is there to defamate this concept, to drown it out, and dismiss and contain me. That's what this is about. Gaslighting, traumatizing, psychologically harassing me. I don't know these people. Um, I did a routine. I have a brand. I have a channel. And I have a goal. And these people are making money off of it. And I'm not. And then they try to say I'm into money with a, 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 a legal retainer budget in case it would make... I'd be smeared. And then you do some kind of process collecting evidence or thinking or whatever you want, and you end up at a conclusion, point B, that you believe is true. Okay? Science is the arrow. That's all science is, is the arrow. Science is yeah, the arrow would be us walking to get to south. But what we found is, is when we... And not that guy who turned right from Oregon who was on Joe Rogan and did like the thinnest, you know, like coast to coast continental section of Antarctica. Come on, man. Obviously, we were taken aback by that. Wow, that's kind of a, a problem, <laughs> right? But there's a whole other way to think, which is that you start. So he's he's having this kind of giggle, like there's a problem in the. You have to understand sociopathy. You can't understand it. It's they they mix amongst empathetic individuals who have morals about caring for the other human being and getting to the truth. They mix in. They're opportunists. They do it for profit. Um, Unbelievable. You start at the conclusion and you say, I have to find evidence that shows that this is true. You're not looking for data to try to prove you wrong or refine your position, right? You're trying to look for all the data that proves you right. You'll cherry pick until you find evidence. I mean, I agree with all these people here, like both sides. That's why it's like, let's settle this with the North South navigation, involve the 47 nations, and do a world peace project. Um, and if not, we could do an event at the 59.9 latitudes and see if warships show up just because we're triggering um, a measurement of the globe by longitude. I mean, okay. We're going to go back here because then this is this Bob Nodell character who uh, doesn't respond on Facebook and tried to do a hit piece that I was part of a gay porn project when I was an MTV actor for a comedy where I played a, a gay quarterback who was in the closet. Uh, so, and they took down my debate with the person who alleges I was a gay porn actor because I, I put him in his place and won. And they tried to say it, was, it made me look bad. So this guy's got a lot of suspicious behavior. And he's saying that they put up something high altitude, but all they have to show for it is a cartoon. Was to encase the fiber optic gyro in what's called a zero gas chamber see if we could actually shield the energies being generated by the heavens and we were unsuccessful with that unfortunately okay so i got a cartoon in your mouth you're just as good as nasa and now he's saying he's unsuccessful with that indicating it might be a globe but all i got is a cartoon backing that up that unsuccessful experiment to defy curvature which is my routine and this guy's promoting this well, he's, he's stating this, but there's no proof. It's just a cartoon. So the next thing that we're going to try is encasing the entire apparatus in bismuth. If anything works well, I'd like to release it at the conference. If there's not anything that you can say, anything you can show me that can make me believe, oh, I guess I'm wrong. It's not falsifiable anymore. It doesn't make any sense for a scientist to argue with that kind of thinking. There's no point. We That's why you... You need to shut down the flat earth by having me, um, how can I put this? Having me uh, in charge of six different scientific teams, 
with 100 people per team, each espousing a shape to our, our earth and having a budget to cover the provisions, the logistics, the casting and recruitment, the scouting, whatever you want to call it, of the individuals they'll have in their team to assist the leaders of each team to enter six different entry points of the continent of Antarctica, all doing a straight line outward, exiting a point that would determine the Earth is a globe or it's flat. With real-time video broadcast back to casinos where the world could bet on whether the Earth is a globe or it's flat, and that monetary uh, component would, would invest a scrutiny and accountability that the results would not be falsified or staged. People could bet maybe through a cryptocurrency called Flatcoin, where we would see a purse accumulate on the, on the side of the Flatcoin, and then once we would reach a certain amount of investment, it would be put towards the expedition. We could have a production company who's going to have the rights to the 24-7 uh, recording of each team with you know, six B camera teams aside from the A camera team or each having the same amount of time. And in the series and the advertising dollars on TV would offset the billion or $846 million dollars that would be awarded to fund the six scientific competing teams. And then the film to boot. I've gotten pushback on this method from every aspect, every, every, every walk of life, every, every industry, and every science. In Hollywood, I knew would always be the weapon to put this in a closet and shut me down by making me look crazy. It's like, this is how you prove the earth is a ball with humans on the ground. And to see it twisted and co-opted in the manner in which I predicted it would be by these characters, while all along they said I was paranoid they would do this and they would participate in this kind of project, is now slander. It's defamation. It's an attack on the scientific method that every human on the ground could participate in or watch many civilians prove to the world it's a globe or it's flat. Being able to prove other aspects of it. And so it's not unreasonable. That so, it's, so he's been able to prove other aspects of it while he's proven it's a globe. So this guy here looks like he's chickening out on camera or he's been a law enforcement plant to steer the narrative all along. For us to continue claiming that He's just still in the game, because I'm still in the game. If I left tomorrow, these guys would all go back to the globe by PR. They're watching a movie. These guys watch a lot of movies. They're delusional by Hollywood already. We're ready to go live once I hit the go live button. It might take a while, because we have a bad connection. We're... What? Hello? We're here. It's Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent. Hello. We are in Houston, Texas at the Houston Space Center. This is the um, that we are in. This is it. This is the entry. This is Whoa. the entry. Whoa. OK, this is impressive. You, you throw the, the general inception soundtrack on anything, it makes it sound way better. This is impressive because of the magnitude of size. Wait, we're the only ones here. Can you want to see how big this is? We're the only ones here. <laughs> yeah, I know, this, this one that, that NASA gets, gets to come. No, it's a safe answer. I'm going to take a little different direction. I don't think I'm a celebrity, but yet when I go to public functions, I run into people that do the deer in the headlights. She's just staring at me, and I go, what? So there's a lot of, like, talking about how there's celebrities off of yeah. a monologue I did on stage. Seriously? And then they'll have asset sock accounts come in, you're jealous, and gaslight me, or you're just, it's like, no, this is called copyright violation through a second party. Third party copyright violation through a, an intermediary um, 
uh, bad actor. She was, yeah, and she had that whole, that that whole thing. That must be a very pleasing feeling because you've affected her life. Being on with me doing the secret show has made your face more recognizable. And being on with you on Strange World was sort of a way that people got to know me a long time ago. So we've been having a love. The rotation is not looking good at this point. <laughs> The last event, really the last event of the conference, Patricia and I are going to be hosting the video awards show. But I don't want to go because I need to stay. You had a nice time, right? I did have a nice time. Yeah, I had a great time too. It was pretty fun. Really nice time. At a conference in Raleigh, we want to help prove there's no curvature. And if we can do that, it's game over. But the rotation is not... So curvature being proven will be done by, again, um, no witnesses and a point of view human beings can't access or it's always limited to one and in the claim of one or a group. We're talking about just on foot and by boat... Um, open up Antarctica, work with the 47 nations. Uh, the globe is putting us on the brink of World War III and economic collapse and climate chaos. Um, but we have no video or film on the globe having a climate crisis. We should all have cameras on the globe if it's going through a climate crisis. That's the one, that would be the first order of business if you can send equipment at high altitude to study the earth or study space. Study the, go the goddamn earth and it's fucking co climate crisis. Part of my, my swearing here. Um, because, you know, people are losing their homes to hurricanes and all sorts of stuff. So if you can't provide that, NASA, then you're phony. Um, and if you can't allow an expedition where there's, it's going to involve, you know, six competing scientific uh, models, the scientific method, by a north-south, just by foot trans transverse, double transverse, uh, traverse of Antarctica, then something's going on. You're reacting like it's not a globe. And so they're not pushing that. And that's the way you do it on the ground. Looking good at this point. <laughs> we don't want to blow this, you know? Right, right. We've got $20,000 in this yeah. freaking gyro. But yeah, if we, if we dumped what we, we found right now, we would be, it'd be bad. <laughs> it would be bad. It'd be bad for the flat earth um, if you dumped this fake experiment that you corroborate with cell animation by Carolyn Clark and her production team of you setting something up with a gyroscope. Now, she did cell animation of your claim that you sent something up, the producer of this film. So let that be exhibit um, E, that there's collusion between this character and the production company. So what I just told Corroborating a narrative to smear me and dismiss the project, which is an expedition. It was confidential. Okay, I'll say <laughs> not any one single experiment proves anything conclusively. That's why we're building a preponderance of evidence. I think there's a few... A preponderance of evidence, but everything but the, the, the clear um, razor's Occam of proving the Earth is a globe. Uh, many witnesses crossing Antarctica and reaching a point on the other coast, they should, from six different entry and exit points, that would prove that Antarctica is the way it's painted in graphic, because it's not photographed, and composite, uh, it appears on the bottom of a globe. That's it. Or both, uh, my favorite, is uh, two circles, one ball. Both 60th latitudes and two teams moving at the same speed and hitting each longitude. You know, again, Star Wars with the lasers, again, satellites, all the things that are like, no, that's not the way to finish this. I think uh, Jaren's working on a great experiment now that's going to help uh, with all that. What we're going to be doing is an experiment at Victoria Canal uh, in Holt, California. It's a 3.88 mile stretch. We're going to actually have set up three posts, one at the start, one at the end, and one in the middle. And then we're going to shoot a laser <coughs> from the first post and see where it crosses uh, that first post. So let's say it's eight feet, and then get it to cross the same point at the far end. And when we can confirm that both are okay, this post um, can't be in 
a debit. This pose can't be on a mound, and this pose, you know, can't be on an angle. I mean, so I got a cartoon showing, again, the, um, the methodology of this laser experiment. But are we gonna have protocols on camera, levels, cameras, or are we gonna have edited footage, we're gonna have no carpentry level put to the posts, we're not going to measure that, you know, the ground is, is actually cement. What is this, it's, uh, um, a parking lot that goes on for 3.88 miles? What in the, the world is this? This is water, are you taking into account the crest of the wave? and deducting it from this. How high is that? Is this level? Are you gonna put a level on a camera proving it's level? Are you gonna have like a bubble, level bubble in liquid that's gonna be filmed on this? No. In the exact same spot. No. Something will tell us what the middle is at. If the middle is at eight feet, it's flat. And if it comes back that it's uh, only you know, five and a half feet, then yeah, I mean that means that the Earth has curvature. That's a cool experiment, actually, just in general. It's interesting. So I'm trying to think of the, the, you know, a laser is just <laughs> going straight. Uh, yeah, that's, you're in a trouble here. So like a laser like for your cat, it would be five or even less millimeters. So this is 3,000 millimeters. The beam will grow as it gets further. And you're like start to bend down so it's just you. Because it could go into a, like a pop cocktail or like a commercial plane and blind the pilot and crash with power. There's so many things that go wrong. I think I didn't give enough credit to people who do experiments. Usually they have a way to bring them out. You know, are they taking into account if it's a canal of water, is it like a cement canal? I mean, is it deeper where they're putting one post? I mean, there's a lot of things you need to, protocols you need to have on camera proving that these poles are in fact, you know, on the ground and at height, right? In correspondence with the other. You're only smoking gun on if there's no video of your through one rotation. Full 24 hours, full frame. Uh, seared by light exposure on camera film or video. Okay? And all your globes are paintings. And people think that the image of the globe I painted is a photo. Okay? And there's a paranoid uh, security buffer at the 60th latitude where they don't allow just anybody just to cross the measure. They select who and they tell, they tell that person where to go. That's all you got. And then you got a moon landing in 1969 where they just look as guilty as that. We Plus, you know, 99% is like the image, imagery that goes these, you know, the model of the heliocentric model. Is, uh, the heliocentric model is, is, is artwork, it's CGI. They would like us to believe that the model has been proven for a long, so the eclipse, the moon had a 70 mile shadow. Um, that doesn't correspond with, like, you know, an object casting the shadow. The shadow is always bigger than the object casting. So how is it smaller than the moon shadow? It's more right now. It doesn't even look like They don't bring that up. That's the next hot debate.
eyes while the rest of us are waking up fast and this everybody's seeing through it everybody what you've done to a comedian's routine who's a political scientist and a hyper realist who brought those two fields of thought together in a comedy performance labeled in entertainment copyrighted it did it on stage in a comedy festival reproduced it in english went the world over was supported by visuals and experiments done and, and thought-provoking insights 
and visuals by Rory Cooper on my perspective, and then repackaged by Cesar and other flat earthers like Flat Earth News Network, way before any of these characters in this film, who all showed up at the same time, and I said they're all gonna triangulate in an event that's produced by a company that probably owns this guy, Mark Sargent, and then the Hollywood film of the event, and then smear it and shut it down, and then defame me and slander me as paranoid when they did everything I said they would do is slander, is character assassination. My question is, why? Because the end of my whole routine and my channel is an expedition film to prove it to everybody and have it accessible by regular folks. The globe will be proven by a north-south expedition by applying the scientific method, which means six different scientists with the same protocols of measurement, which is crossing Antarctica, should reach the other coast at this point, if not told exactly where to go and turn right, like the one guy with no witnesses and no video, we should prove the Earth is a globe or defy it. Everybody smears me and calls me the smear agent. No, I am protecting the treasure, which is the scientific method for civilians to prove the Earth is a globe. Delusional or the C word, which is the crazy word. I think a lot of times we say crazy and it's a scapegoat. It's an umbrella term, right? How many, anyone, how many people in here have been called crazy before? I have shared it with my mother, my daughter, uh, two guys who I was dating who didn't want to date me anymore after I told them about my Now it's about their relationships falling apart. No, I have uh, four children. My sons are grown. Them and their mother, who's my ex-wife, kind of think dad's a little off, gone off his rocker. I um, just finalized the divorce. Uh, a four of an uh, argument is war. For everyone, and it is so touching. But give me a hug. It's just give me a hug. You're laughing. <laughs> No, you don't have to. Of a scientist that could have been someone that fell through the cracks. And we as ambassadors of science are called upon to do more. Right? Yeah, let's do an expedition, science. Um, science you have your own team. Professionalism. Seriously. You know, like, this is affecting a budget of $186 million for 100 people and snow cats and equipment to peacefully cross the ice of Antarctica to prove the Earth is not flat or prove it's a globe or prove it's flat, one or the other. Hollow, concave, we'll give you a budget, each one, just for the kick and the entertainment to unify the world instead of like pitting it against each other with this uh, Pentagon industrial, military industrial war machine that's uh, hell-bent on grabbing resources and mineral extraction from other nations under the, you know, the pretext of the empire's will and wanting of this nation to hand it over. This is a much better um, event than invading Venezuela. And Venezuela is almost like the precursor to an extermination scenario because we're waking up and questioning the globe. Which has also been part of, like, if it spreads, the reaction will be world war. Scatter warships across the oceans, scrutinizing ships that might be going south. As ridiculous as it sounds, the theater is being set up for that. And this movie was exactly what I was worried and I warned you all about. And those who said, unify with us, um, called me paranoid that they would participate in such a project. And we're moving towards the end of this narrative saying they're all unstable and crazy and a failed experiment by none other than Jaron and Bob Nodell, who smeared me with Morgyle saying um, that I was a, a gay porn actor. Look, it's really disgusting what these people did to a painter, comedian, political scientist. Really disgusting. I'm in a Christ position right now, being crucified in this project. If you want to support me, you know, this is what really pisses off. You know, this is the, the vampire's garlic. They hate. They hate. This. They hate this shirt. This is the vampire's garlic. There's going to be a donation button. Um, it keeps me going. It keeps me going because they're trying to eviscerate me from my own comedy monologue that's part of a, an event that I've been producing that will trigger an expedition and a documentary with a civilian application of the scientific method to prove the Earth is a globe, not NASA, 
not images that, that NASA and RASA and ESA uh, take advantage of the public, public suspension of disbelief to assume these are photos. No, this is pure me measurement. 100 people per team, six scientific bodies. That's the application method of the, the scientific method. I mean, this is really like, I warned you and I was attacked and I'm stripping this back down to a comedy routine and this painting being violated by this company because I said it would cost about $846 million. That's a drop in the bucket for Jeff Bezos of Blue Origin who violated my copyright in partnership with Behind the Curve Production Delta, Delta, Delta 5, right? He's made money off this painting through Delta 5 Productions on Amazon Prime. So I might have found my guy um, in a settlement that's going to um, fund um, the end of the flat earth through the scientific method crossing Antarctica six teams, 600 people. They consider becoming a mentor to someone who is coming from a non-traditional point of entry to the science. Because that's my goal, and that was what I was, I was doing this all for. So this film basically cost me uh, the credibility of, of that expedition, which is touted at a billion dollars. So I'm suing for a billion dollars. Amazon, Netflix, and Delta Five Productions. If you're not willing to engage with them, you, you can't expect them to change. You just hope that they're willing to even have play, but often when you push them to We're going to go get it. We're going to go get it. It takes a lot of effort. We're going to go get, get the money. These people are making off fucking me and trying to ruin this film, this event, this world peace project. And why? I'm, I'm there to prove your globe. Why? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, so here's your laser test. See a red line right around where that green is? So how do they know those poles are... This way a little bit. To your right. Oh, wow. Press it once to turn on, then double press it. Right there. I mean, they're assuming the ground is level for their posts to be level. I think it'll be... I think it'll be under a foot for sure. There's so many assumptions in this experiment, it's already a failure. Both ones hitting at the same height, then we'll move the panel in, in between the middle people will. And then wherever it crosses the panel, that's it, that one over there. I mean, they got to put it eight feet above the water. We're, we're ready. I got a big beam, so if you're going to see it. There was absolutely no video record by boat, measuring each pole is eight feet from the surface of the water in daylight before we go into laser at night. That wasn't filmed, that wasn't done, and it's not being portrayed. So this is heading towards creating a narrative that these people are stupid and they don't know how to do experiments or their experiments prove the Earth is a globe by the fact that it's a failed experiment with no accountability for protocols to ensure that it was done uh, through the scientific method. So this person I warned of over and over again, and I also warned this person how to um, apply these protocols to ensure the scientific method would be applied to his experiment. He did none of it. Yeah, I can see it, but it's kind of high. high. Yeah, he's got it on an angle there. You're, you, you, didn't, you didn't film a level to see that your laser is going to be level. Okay, now they're trying to fit a narrative to hit the post. I mean, <clears throat> I think the beam's going to be too big, though. Yeah, and I also told him um, that the beam gets wider at the end. So it's like there was no camera to show that your your beam is being. You're just going like this. I mean, this is really. Tell me if the beam gets smaller right now. Okay. okay, tell me if it gets smaller. There. The beam is taking up a whole panel. The beam's taking up a whole I panel, of course. First. I think you should work on that beam first. 
for the specs on that laser that it should get to that small of a dot at that distance. So basically, uh, I mean, I don't want to bore you, but. Less than four feet. Of course, I was there. So basically, a cartoon of a satellite allegedly proving a 15 degree, you know, tilt or angle, and then no, no accountability of uh, regimented protocols to assure the scientific method wasn't going to be cheated or skewed with the level of the water, the posts at daytime on camera. I mean, well, it went to me too. Are we twinkling? Here we go. And then this conference. Eleven hundred fifty miles yesterday. So I traveled from Ireland then to Iceland. Oh. Okay. So this event is the event that I said they would create around Mark Sargent that a Hollywood film would come and then film. So this is it. This is it. So well, how paranoid was I? You call me paranoid now, based off this is what I say, said they were going to do, that's now slander. That's defamation. And the production itself, when I'm telling them that these are my concerns, that's why I'm setting up these conditions, to produce exactly what my concerns were being a part of with people that were, I said were plagiarizing me, and I wanted to find out if they were going to be the central characters, that turns the production company into... Um, a psychological harassment where it's like, I wish I would have put a restraining order on them. Right? And I still might. But now they're making money with Netflix and Amazon, so the harassment continues. And the defamation, the slander, the skewing, the copyright violation, one of the things that protects copyright is that you're not to alter the moral universe of the... Um, creator's original work, right? It wasn't intended to be in this film this way. I had conditions to be in your film. These, you're violating the conditions on camera with these people. Hello. And you even made it look like I was paranoid about Mark and whether or not he worked for, worked, worked for, I didn't, or was, no. I said that he works with, and I have the email correspondence, so I sent that correspondence. She receives it. And then she lies on camera, saying, I'm claiming he's the Warner Brothers executive. Why is she doing that? That's a lie. That's defamatory. So that's going to be exhibit E, defamation and lies by the production company. Are you? Hug or a handshake or how about both? This room is big. What if I trip when I walk up there? You know, like something like that. I know. We got a banner. They have money. The guy who put the money behind this, selling tickets, rented this room, part of an economy. Right? Um I think they even got Google on billboards. Like they're broadcasting Google like Google was a sponsor of this entire operation. And that's why Google was basically recommending these people's videos over the video that started it. And they're plagiarists with the intent to smear, contain, and then uh, break the, any kind of momentum for this expedition film that I've been working, which is the whole reason why I did the, the, the monologue. And this is interrupting it. And I'm being gaslit. And they're psychologically harassing me. And they're putting strain on my relationships, my finances, my brand. They're frauding my company. They have people in the film who pretend to be Matt Powerland. They have uh, punchlines from my monologue coming out of the, the mouth of Mark Sargent. They got Mark Sargent speaking on me, my behalf and lying. We've got the documentary filmmaker lying about me saying Mark Sargent was like a No, I said his partner was. Um, his partner even admitted to it. So this isn't very good documentary investigation or filmmaking. This is something else. Used to the safety of YouTube. He's busy being Mark Sargent. So this is going to be their conference. $200 a ticket. 
Uh, so 600 people showed up. 600 times two. We're at 120 thousand dollars here. Where's this money coming from up front? Web sites, ticket sales. This guy here, who's he? This man's from Canada, coming in and inside, is shuttling inside and out of the U.S. and he's doing this conference and he's part of a project that's basically involving plagiarists. And I said, I'll be a part of your project or your conference to cover the hotel and the flight. And that condition was denied. This is incredible, these people. It's incredible. Who are these people? We may not agree with one another, we can choose to get all wrapped on that, or we can sit here and we can be here and we can grow saying, you know what? We all agree we're not on a spinning ball flying through space. This will continue to grow, this will get bigger, and honestly, change the world. This one right here with number two. To bring out Jared Campanella. So this is the conference, still some footage. When it all started, I was looking for the truth, you guys know that. And deep right here. This is a Reader's Digest version of the Flat Earth Theory and some of the more interesting topics. I hear a lot of things about Mark Sargent, but one thing I can say is that Mark Sargent is one of the hardest workers in Flat Earth. So, you know, I built a studio here. Um, I've, I've said I, I'd be willing to participate in this conference if it's legit. Just, you know, like since I, I tr you're using my monologue, um, you're using my talking points. Um, I'd be curious, but cover the flight and the accommodations. These people made $120,000 off these people who think that these people came up with this. And they're not pushing any scientific method. Matter of fact, they're blowing it on camera, and they're not—they're not scrutinizing or, uh, you know, ensuring protocols around their experiments that ensure that the experiment is legit. And it's just fodder for this documentary crew. To do exactly what I said this documentary crew would do: make a hit piece on me. It's incredible. I mean, and you guys are paying for this now on Netflix, and Netflix is making money off this doing everything I said they would do with this character, Mark Sargent, according to my witness, Diane English. That applause is supposed to be for somebody like me. That applause is something I got when I did the routine. This is uh, incredible. I don't think there's ever been something like this. Such a clear violation of an artist's work in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love you. This and is I'm surreal. Not you're, not, you're not in my position here. You're not in my position here. None of you. You don't have any wherewithal to go, I'm a diva or whatever. I know there's people out there with invisible accounts that are going to come on this video now and say stuff. I don't think anybody can be in my position or what I'm going through. A crazy, amazing thing to see everybody. Look my at the phone. amount of people here. These people have exploited my work. This is incredible. Who, where did all this money go to? The community, that's no lie. I love you, excited and most sincere. I have a feeling that any kind of grassroots movement that has to do with like that challenges the status quo or the establishment. There's a group that sent in, co-ops it, and then does this and gaslights the individual that started the, the revolution um, to suicide or to oblivion or to financial ruin or tries to set up a scenario to take them out legally, illegally. While they do this, steal, co-op the revolution. It's a duplication of my work, which brings you nowhere and doesn't apply the scientific method. It's ruining uh, my work, my original work, which is do the monologue, have the channel carry it to the point where it gets to a fever pitch, people demand uh, a crossing Antarctica, and we do the film. They're trying to ruin it. Thank you. So, microphone, question. How long do you think it will take for this to be 
fought alongside the Glover. I think we're we're almost at the critical mass point, and the media here proves that. Within the uh, CIA, who oh. actually implanted you within the community? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so who's that guy? Now. I said that this guy was, he, he reeked of the way he did his um, presentation, Flat Earth Clues, in 2015. And when I talked to my friend and producer um, that was possibly thinking about doing this, you know, at one point if I got a budget, I'd need help. Um, I said, the format stinks of Twilight Zone narration, Unsolved Mysteries, or Jesse Ventura's Conspiracy Show. Um, the package is very reminiscent of Hollywood script writing style. I have a feeling this guy's been inserted in YouTube so that a production company could uh, run with my, my concept, steer it in a different direction so I can't do my expedition. And I'm going to bring light to that with the Patricia Steer character um, who's in this film and where she gets the wherewithal to say, I'm never going to do an expedition. And then also... It's going to contradict what she's saying on uh, social media right now, where she didn't know she was going to be roped up in a, in a propaganda hit piece. She went to each screening and paid for her flight, allegedly, or somebody did, uh, and promoted it on Facebook uh, after seeing the film. And now she's taking the position that she was a victim of the film. So, and she's the one who said, I won't do an expedition, and she's in this film. Who is behind propagating the globalist lie? It's the U.S. government. Are other governments in collusion? Yes, yes, and yes. All those things. All of the above. You, go! Um, I was wondering, how high do you think the dome is? Step further and then just kind of, you know, discount all kinds of scientific principles. Long live, long live flat earth. <laughs> Hey, very welcome, man. There's a, a TV show in Britain called Space Cadets where they had civilians go through like basic training to be an astronaut for about eight weeks or six weeks and then um, had them suit up um, and then go into a rocket where the windows of the rocket uh, made it appear outside, but they could change into outer space. They made them think they were going into outer space and that they were actually on a celestial body or over a celestial body known as Earth. And the whole thing was done in the studio, and they broke it to them after. These people had serious psychological breakdowns knowing that they didn't go into space and they were tricked in front of live audiences. You could do that to an astronaut. They did it to civilians. You could do that by signing NDAs. You could do that. You, you could technically, they did do that on a British Channel 4 production, I believe it was Channel 4. What is it that you want them to take away? Question everything. Don't assume anything when it comes to what you're told. If you're wrong about this, what else do you want to you know, revisit? Evolution? Big Bang? It runs the gamut from people who are anti-vaxxers. Denial of evolution, because it conflicts with the Bible, for example. And all of a sudden you get people that maybe work in our government that don't believe what 97% of all climate experts say. And so they're making... And, and what is that? If, if there's climate expertise saying that we have a climate problem, how come after trillions of dollars, uh, Scott Kelly, you didn't put a camera up there so we could see the weather patterns form? And at a, at a distance where we could see this climate crisis. So it's a fail. You don't have the earth as a ball doing one spin on itself, which is one day on camera. And when I say on camera, not composite CGI with planet earth hosted by... Richard Attenborough or Atkinson, whatever his name is, Sir Richard Atkinson, Attenborough, um, National Geographic's Blue Planet or Planet Earth. Did you know that all that imagery in that documentary was all special effects studio production out of, a, out of Hollywood? A company produced all the imagery of the globe for that documentary on National Geographic, which is a government channel, government publication out of Washington, D.C. Did you know that? It's not actual real satellite camera footage, one snap light exposure on video or film of the Earth as a ball. That's CGI. Uninformed or poorly informed decisions. And that affects all of us. Especially with social media now. There's a lot of... See, they're not bringing up that, what I keep bringing up at all in this film. Has, ever, has it ever been brought up that this started because there's an overwhelming... There's an, a, 
a, a disturbing amount, a disturbing reliance by science on artwork as uh, proof of high altitude points of view. And that's including high altitude of globe uh, Venus, globe Jupiter, globe Uranus. It's all artwork, except for like Milky Way and constellations, you know, things that we could see ourselves, but other things we can't access. It just so happens is artwork and artist rendering image composite. Wow, how convenient. Like it would be if you were lying about the globe. Information out there. I know YouTube. They'll say YouTube is full of rabbit holes that don't go anywhere. Right now, everybody's like fake news, fake news. Fake news, fake news. Yeah, of course. If you have a growing section of the population that doesn't know. News, by the way, is northeast, west, south. Ah, uh -huh. fake northeast, west, south. How to think critically and doesn't know how to evaluate expert resources. They're going to be very easy to manipulate. Why not like raise the money and like do an exploration and find the end of the year? Spoilers. <laughs> I didn't see that part. He goes, why not raise the money, maybe through a lawsuit against these three, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, Netflix, and Delta 5 Productions. I think if we put our heads together, the people that understand what this movie is, really is, it's a propaganda piece, and we can work with me, I can lead an expedition. The money's there. Jeff Bezos just made an extra uh, uh, X amount of dollars off uh, premiering Behind the Curve, which is a copyright violation of this artwork and my likeness after I declined to participate in it, and Netflix and Delta 5. We have a billion dollars, my friend. So wh whoever wants to email me and get involved in either the Kickstarter for a legal fund like where it's going to pay for a good legal team to take on Bezos, Amazon Prime, Netflix, and Delta 5, you contact me. And if you're a lawyer just getting out of school, you want to cut your teeth like the guy who took down Led Zeppelin's too chicken to do with the Flat Earth and Math Powerland, you contact me, 786-355-0818. That's my business line. That's the Math Powerland LLC main line. And you can email me at mathpowerland at gmail.com or encrypted email, allegedly, mathpowerland at protonmail.com. Because she just brought it up and then he just goes, spoiler. So are they planning on faking an expedition on a cruise ship? We have to stop this. We have acquired funding. It was only a matter of time before we were going to get money. So now the experiments start ramping up. Go ahead and roll the video. So this guy here plays like a buck-toothed hillbilly who's um, pretending to be a flat earther or a globalist who's making fun of the flat earth. And he's uh, in footage with Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's now a known sexual predator, potential rapist that's got court hearings alleging that he's, um, he's, he's date-raped certain uh, female assistants and students. This guy is in cohort with Neil deGrasse Tyson playing some sort of character. So he's an actor here. He plays like a total slapstick hillbilly, trying to prove the earth is flat, making flat earth look bad. And he gets camera time in his skits with Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he's admitted to that. Since the late 1800s, science has been shifting from discovery to dogma. It's time for the scientific research field to be unencumbered. Today we announce the formation of Field Engineers Corps an international group dedicated to true scientific discovery, free of dogmatic agenda. This is going to be the chance to do our science and present it to the world. To the world, we will experimentally show that there is no curvature to the Earth, there is no forward motion to the Earth, as well as the energy that's coming from the stars and the sky. It's rotating around this plane at about 15 degrees per hour. You know, everything but this to get to this. You know, if it's flat, I'm not going to get to this. If it's a ball, I go in here, I'm going to get to this. Not that little, you know, land bridge that the guy from Oregon did, and he was told, you go to the South Pole, where's that? It's right there. And then, you, no, 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 you don't continue, you turn right. 
You just do the smallest amount of abridged land. Now, six different teams, which is a scientific method, six scientists, same protocol, should come to the same conclusion. By walking and taking a boat across this, you know, from entry point all crossing, they should all meet almost at the same time or not, but they'll see the tag of the first team in the South Pole and the second team and the third team, and then continue, you know, one host country is the entry and then another host country is the exit. It needs to be a world peace project. And if, if they're going to create the tension through World War III where they can't have one agree to be the exit while another's the entry, well, it's like, well, why? Because you're at war? How convenient. So it's triggering that, this expedition protocol of mechanisms to ensure the scientific method of crossing Antarctica through a true civilian north-south trek audit expedition to measure the continent so that it, it does result in what they told us it should as a landmass at the bottom of a globe should not be impeded by theater of war and if it is impeded by whatever protocol or red tape we need to we need to have an answer on paper if we can move this towards either two circles one ball both 60th latitudes two teams moving at the same speed hitting longitudes and it doesn't work out in the south as it does in the north where they're always late in the south to preempt you know the pressure a fever pitch for a multi-civilian audit crossing, then there's something wrong. And if it continues to be sending stuff up rather than across, or a controlled crossing through cruise ship, or one person, or these characters on some sort of like comedy central, you know, like let's make fun of the flat earthers like they made fun of 9-11 truthers with Channel 4 and BBC and Comedy Central with, you know, Charlie Veach who sold out with uh, Maxwell, the comedian and for Ireland, all those sellouts. Well then, there's something being hidden. And then it's civilian cannonball run, boat rush, or bloodbath, whatever the case may be. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. All of existence suddenly is through a different lens. I want to believe this. This of and space and the W don't. Well, then the guy that was at the middle said, "No, it's hitting weeds." So that ends with um, um, basically, you know, how they're. It was a joke. Their experiment. I don't know if it's saying names here. Let's see, let's see what they got in credits here. <clears throat> so that would be that would be motion graphics. I don't know if that's animation. So these people here need to be sought out if you want to help me out, because I want to know how long it took to do the cell animation or the motion graphics. So we got all these ca camera operators there that could be summoned to see if they were directing takes. The person that was a globe believer was saying, isn't that proof the Earth curves? Well then, the guy that was at the middle said, no, it's hitting weeds. We got a storyboard artist. So they did have a narrative. Is this a documentary film? A storyboard artist. So that's why I sent that the conditions is like, do they have a preconceived narrative and they're trying to fit me into that? No, I won't participate because the topic was generated by my comedy monologue. I have to protect that brand. I have a film project of my own, an expedition across Antarctica. This is a really disgusting, sophomoric, juvenile uh, B-movie pretending to be a documentary film ethic. You know, it's a trial and error basis and, and you're right. I absolutely love the video that you so these are the people that you that I've warned you are fake and they would all triangulate so they did give credit to Scott Kelly, Spiros um, so I guess they paid them or he signed off 
then we tried to do it again, like to replicate that result, and we didn't get the same result. There was just nothing that we could walk away from and say for sure was decided. So these are other people? Like, so that's the guy's name, the guy who frauded me. So that's very indicative that they didn't put his name. They did exactly what I just Was I paranoid? While I was watching this film, I was like, what are they going to put in the credits? Flat Earther? Infinite Plain Society? So he signed a, an interview release form, Mrs. Clark, and the signature said Infinite Plain Society? Why are you concealing this man's identity when he frauded my company, Math Powerland, and you frauded yourself and your intentions to have me in your film? And you still paint me as paranoid, but you painted me in the exact manner I was concerned these people were painting me and how you would paint me with them for me to see copyright and trick me out of my own monologue. This is unbelievable. This, did he sign that too, that way? Legal services provided by Donaldson and Khalif. Well, if I can't find your address, okay, I might have to send it to them on your behalf. Alexander Youssef Zadah. Wow, I'm going to love this. Khalif Youssef Zadah. Arabic, Jewish, what is Israeli? Let's find out who these legal people are. Who the lawyers are? What's their nationality? Are they citizens of two countries? Who are their clients? Oh, oh, that's right. Who are their clients? Right? Oh, we got world sales here. Uh, so, Andrew Hurwitz, president, the film sales company. We've got a lot of people here we could serve. We're going to find an address somewhere. Footage and images courtesy of. Jaron Campanella is part of that. Bob Nodell is part of that. Mark Sargent's part of that. Patricia Steer, Nathan Thompson, they've all signed an interviewee release form. Oh, excuse me. I did it. And this whole topic is generated from me. You even admit I'm the originator. <laughs> okay, so additional materials. <clears throat> Darren Nesbeth presentation. Flat Earth message apparently behind Hillside Graffiti, CBS Lost Agenda, da, 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 da. Flat Earth, you know, epic deception, ODD reality. Sell a crowd expected for Flat Earth, CBS Philly. Nine News, Paramount, The Truman Show, Paramount Pictures, Comedy Central, Philly Voice, Flight Time Christchurch, Matt Powerland, Forbidden Comic, Matt Boylan. Okay. This here. Okay. Flat Earth Evening with Mark Sargent, alleged that, yeah, first contact radio. Jimmy Kimmel Live. So, who did they pay here? Oh, Flat Earth Street Interviews, Dell. Who did they pay here? And who did they not? And who signed an interview release here? And who did not? And which images of these people are not mentioned here, such as this one here? Okay. It goes again. Flat Earth Dome explains. Simplest irrefutable to the cosmos, the Joe Rogan experience. He's lent himself out to this as well. Flat Earth Infinite Planar Dome from Nicole Cote. So they, they went around searching for these people. She said she never signed a release form. It's additional materials by. But they have commons. They don't have commons on this. Okay? Lori Ferry, Math Powerline, Boylan Masons on damage control. The Earth is flat. How to be flat earth and wind, Matt Boylan. Um, I never accepted this. I never wanted to be in this. I declined. So 
So they are mentioning each video here. Uh, so I don't know who these people are. These are special thanks. Caltech, Brandon, Patty. Did they get paid for that? Fiscal sponsorship provided by the International Documentary Association. That's another group that needs to be served. They funded this, and they're, they, they apparently rule under the ethos of documentary. Nathan Thompson was doing takes. So was Mark Sargent. And you were directing takes. So there you go. All rights reserved. How do you claim something that's already had all rights reserved? Delta 5 Productions? Like my likeness and my thing? So in fair use, I think I've occupied more time than the film. In fair use law, right? I'm not here making profit off this. You are. And you're the copyright violator. And you're the smear agent, which is what I said you would do with this production. And you're after the fact of my all rights reserved on my all rights reserved painting and my likeness. And I didn't approve of participating in your film because you, you had conditions that you didn't meet with me that would prove to me you had a narrative already decided, you had a central character you already decided, and that person is a chief plagiarist of my, my comedy routine. And for me to sign a, a release form with the C copyright to your central character, which I've accused of uh, trying to co-opt and destroy my project, which is an expedition film, or co-opt it. So I'm going to now play a narrative of timeline with, um, that was done by Rex Joswick, great, great, funny filmmaker. Go check out Rex Joswick Productions, um, which is going to show that Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent were going to the screening, private, sc of, like the festival screenings of Behind the Curve before it was on Amazon Prime and Netflix. And she spoke on my behalf with certainty that I would never do an expedition, which is the crux of my comedy routine on my channel, is to do an expedition uh, applying the scientific method uh, where civilians en mass, en mass could uh, just cross Antarctica to prove the Earth is not flat or a globe. So there's some like style before it, um, but there's a Q&A with somebody after the screening in the audience of the Hot Docs International Film Festival in Toronto, and there's her piping up on my behalf, really adamant as somebody I've never met, trying to speak on my behalf and that I'm not going to do an expedition. Very interesting. And so, it, and the reason why I'm going to show this is because it conflicts with her position right now on social media and vocally that she was tricked into a hit piece. Watch. Do you know what nemesis means? A righteous infliction of retribution manifested by an appropriate agent. documentary that doesn't really support the theory. Yeah. If <laughs> walking out of here, if I didn't research it ahead of time, if I still, and I didn't you know, believe the earth was a globe, sure. and I don't even know if it is flat, whatever, either way, I, like what I would said. leave this, this theater thinking, oh, that was a far 15 said. degree <laughs> movement uh, of the earth, mm. and this laser experiment, of course it's a globe. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And it, people like you, I would not approve that. I would not, I would wow. not be in a film that just presents two scientific, supposedly scientific views mm -hmm. that prove a it's a globe. 
But yeah, yeah, go for it. I'd love to know uh, what's happening with the boat expedition, and if there is one, will you film it? Yes. Uh, uh, some people, I believe, <laughs> math power. <powerful. laughs> uh, no, uh, I think it's fecore.com that we're talking about all sorts of more high-tech experiments yeah, was, with a was, laser in the weeds. Uh, the question was about the boat? Yeah, the boat expedition. I thought you said that they were getting funding together to go on the boat expedition, and if there is one, would you film it? But well, there, there, is, might... there are some people that right. are looking to do an Antarctic expedition. Right. I think Matt. No, Matt, uh, Matt will never do an uh, Antarctic expedition. I just want to say that now. Says, That'll never happen. Uh, right. you, yeah, check out FE Core. I guarantee you within 10 minutes of Mark coming to the hood, somebody cracked his fucking jaw with his pompous ass mouth. He has no fucking idea how to live in that world. These motherfuckers of the flat earth, these popular leaders, are doing the same fucking thing your politicians have done to you forever. Sit up there, look pretty, say all the right things, and lead you into the fucking slavery system you're already in. Whether they're doing it on purpose or not, I don't give a fuck. They're either naive as fuck, delusional as fuck, or evil as fuck. I don't give a fuck which one I ain't following them either way. They live in a fucking fantasy world and they're trying to suck you into it. These people are fake as fuck. They only care about their little bubble. Fuck them, fuck you if you support them. What I'm trying to convey here is that she's on social media right now claiming that she fell prey to uh, a propaganda film that she didn't know was going to paint her in a light that makes her look stupid and part of a hit piece on Flat Earth. That's what she's saying today. But she's in a theater right there for the screening. And then after that screening, she saw the movie. There's no unseeing if you're in that audience, you've proven that you were there. After the screenings, she was promoting Behind the Curve, so was Robbie Davidson, so was Mark Sargent. So for them to say that, like, they didn't know and they were in the hit piece and they were victims, it doesn't wash folks. They're still, they're like a parasite uh, on my brain, on my expedition film that is, like, now embedding itself as playing victim to, we didn't know that she was going to, like, misrepresent... You went to the screenings, and then you still promoted it as a pro flat Earth film. So you guys are complete sociopaths. Like that's what sociopathy is. Just stay afloat in your opportunistic um, feeding frenzy off somebody else's thing. It's disgusting. And so if you want to be part of this uh, massive legal operation, like trying to untangle this and finding a, a good legal team, please email me. I'm serious because. I'm not going to let these people stop uh, human beings and the, the United Nations right to travel, the right to mobility um, concerning passing the 60th latitude for a real uh, thorough, complete measurement uh, through a north-south double traverse of Antarctica with six different scientists, six different scientific communities and witnesses that are civilians that are not affiliated to UNESCO, the United Nations, or the Antarctic Treaty Project, or any world military member of the Antarctic Treaty Project. And by all means, any of the 150 or so nations that are not signatory members of the Antarctic Treaty Project, if they want to get involved, that a city councilor, a politician like Madame Gatineau, uh, Madame uh, Lemure up in Gatineau, Quebec, who came out recently questioning la redundancy redund didité de la planète Terre comme sphère, the, the, the curvature of the earth. Um, and she's had to resign. I mean, we are looking for politicians that want to file motions on behalf of nations at the UN to open up an audit before the United Nations collapses under the US, violating Protocol 1 of the Geneva Convention and United Nations Charter of Human Rights by invading Venezuela and making the whole thing collapse like the League of Nations before World War I or World War II. I mean, come on, man. Like, it's chop-chop. 
I'm the real man. I'm the one who started it. I'm still here. Let's stripping it down, right back down to a comedy monologue. And anybody who's not smearing me and is pushing this monologue for what it's supposed to really represent, um, by all means, I give you the right. But if you're going to take my work and then attack me or twist it or smear it, you're in violation of my moral universe as the originator, as Behind the Curve has attested and admitted, and especially during email correspondence, of this tremendous event that's been triggered by a comedian who then has a channel to push, to push the globe right over the edge.